we're back. We're back with Matthew B. Cox, hey, the con man to the stars, aka Short King. <laughs> the last video did good. Uh, what? The last video did good. Oh, did you it? did it here? Yeah, huh? yeah, the yeah. one that you did here. Yeah, it did good. How about you? How about uh, the podcast that you and I did together on your channel? That was good. That got, you know, from my channel, that got good results. Like everybody liked it. Mm. What kind of comments were on there? Everybody liked, everybody liked Danny. They were like, he was way more interesting than they thought. It was a good interview. Like, oh, I didn't know that. Hey, wow. Ooh, you know. He like, must no, have lied the whole fucking time. No, nah, they don't know anything about him. And then, then then there was a whole thing like, bro, you could tell more was going on with the whole Ben thing. Danny totally, like, you know, he, he totally avoided the I issue. I swerved it. So, yeah, <laughs> just they were all. It's You know, it's funny listening to the comments. Or reading the comments where the guys start getting into arguments yeah. and they get pissed off. and That's it, the first podcast I've ever done as a guest. It was good. So thank you for popping my cherry. I don't like the way that sounded, but hmm. yeah, yeah, it's good. You pop my podcast cherry. Cheers. Oh my god. Mm. Good time. So what's going on, Matt? Um, what's going on in your world? Where where'd you, you just went to uh, that conservative coffee shop to show off all those fucking absurd Trump paintings? Yeah. Did I you guess. sell any there? No, I didn't even show them. I did, okay, so there were uh, there was a, a <coughs> woman that watches my podcast. Um, her name's Noreen, and she bought a couple of paintings like a few months ago. She'd seen like the Trump painting, and she bought two of them. And then she was coming down. I forget where she's from. Um, I don't know Ohio or Michigan or something. Mm -hmm. And she came down and she said, "Hey, I'd like to meet you at." And I'm going to Conservative Grounds Coffee. Would you want to meet me there? And I was like, sure. So she wanted me to give her a, a signed book. So I met her there, gave her some signed books, and that was it. Do you know uh, we did a whole documentary on Conservative Grounds? You saw it? Yeah, yeah, right. I saw it. That's how I. That, as soon as she said it, I knew exactly what. Oh, she was really? Talking. I was like, oh, oh, no problem. I'll that, meet you there. That was a pretty funny documentary we did. Yeah, he's pulling up so. the comments of uh, your podcast with me. They're they're pretty positive. Yeah, they are positive. I think I think this is a podcast that we were all waiting for, especially if you're a fan of Concrete and Matt. That's right. I love all the positivity in here. So Don, Don Pierce says, "I have respect for this guy now." For me, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta respect it. He didn't respect you before that, though. Respect. No, that's that's what I got from it too. <laughs> So not yeah. before that. See, you look at the negative. There was no respect. I look at the positive. I look at it. I look <laughs> as it at it as a glass half full. You look at it as a glass half empty. Woo! Glass. Woo! Glass is full of shit. You want to hit? God damn, those smelling salts are strong. Oh. Mm. Whew. Hmm. All right. So is this lady like dressed up, like decked out in MAGA gear? No, she's she's no, she's a retiree. She was really nice. She really? had a, a friend with her that lives uh, somewhere around here. She was really nice. And okay. she wanted some of your books. She um, no, it was yeah. paintings. No, she bought some of my paintings, and then she asked me to bring a book. So Sign I brought up. several of my books, and I signed them, and that was it. Yeah, it nice. What, nice. What kind of paintings did she buy? Two Trump <laughs> paintings. Okay, <laughs> they're big sellers. She's got. Yeah, she got to get back to her hotel room just in time for Tucker at eight. <laughs> You know, you know, uh, Jessica Kent when she did my podcast. Yeah, she asked me to take the Trump painting down. Really? Yeah. Or, Why? I, she, you know, she's just not a fan. She said, "Take it down." She, she goes, "Can I get you to take it down?" And I didn't know how serious she was, and I was like, "Absolutely, of course, no problem." I mean, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not married to it. I was. You like, mean, yeah. what, was it on, in the background of the video? It's in the background of all my all what well, that there. I've got like usually I have four paintings up because I I've got some paintings they're called mod they're modified screen print so I paint them. Mm -hmm. You know, I paint them, then I do a screen print over them, and then I paint other stuff on them. You know, and then I, I you know, put a couple coats of varnish on them and the whole thing. Yeah. So, But Trump was up there, That's and it's so a big weird. seller. That's like, so funny. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not. Is I can, it a big seller bigger, bigger of a seller than Biggie? The Biggie one is dope. The Biggie one is pretty cool. Yeah. I love the purple and, and gray one. Can you see these on the camera? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah those the are big, badass. The Biggie one's cool, yeah. And the bu bubblegum, I mean, all, bro, honestly, like, I just don't push them. People see them in the background, and they'll randomly send me an email saying, bro, is that painting for sale? I'm like, like, yeah, well, you, I want the Marilyn Monroe, and I'll sell them a Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. Or they'll say, hey, do you have one with, like, green hair? <clears throat> I do have one with green hair. <laughs> Funny, you should Funny ask. You say that, you know, and so I sell them every once in a while. I don't push them. I need to start pushing them. Yeah, yeah. What was that? 
He told you told me the most epic story about Trump the other day about the guy that was mm. golfing with him. What was that story? Oh, it was on that golf podcast. Some pro golfer. He went. He was golfing with Trump, and they were on. It was just like him and Trump, and they had all the Secret Service or whatever out there, a little ways behind him or whatever, and they were they were golfing, and like all the Secret Service like rushed in. They were like, "We have a uh, an air breach." They were calling it an air breach. So like somebody was flying into the airspace where they're at. So they like. I don't know. They got all together to protect him or whatever, and they see this little fucking Cessna putting through the air over the golf course. <laughs> Probably some old guy. <laughs> Single and, engine Cessna. And then, like, 10 seconds later, they're watching that Cessna, and they said two fucking bomber fighter jets just zoom in, shooting flares at the fucking plane Stealth to get bombers. him to turn out of there Stealth. and get the hell out of there. And um, so they fly by. They shoot flares at him, get him out of there, and they're like, okay, Mr. President, there's it's safe now. You guys can go back to enjoying your golf game. And he said he walks over with Trump, and Trump looks at him, and he goes, that's power. <laughs> and then tees off. <laughs> and then fucking hits the ball. Are you dead serious? You're safe now. I was always safe. Yeah. <laughs> you were overreacting. That you know Trump heavy. loved that, oh, though. Oh, yeah. Super handicap. Oh, my God. You know he's fucking counting. He's shaving hell. He strokes. shinks it into the woods, and the Secret Service probably grabs it, tosses <laughs> it back out to the green. Did yeah, you I was see that movie? Did you see that movie? <laughs> yeah, what is that from? Yeah, I've yeah, never seen oh, that before. Man, that was great. The, it was a <laughs> retired, it Richie Rich? No, no, it was a retired It was a retired president who goes to this little town, and, and he, you know, he hit the ball. He would play golf, and they would be Secret Service agents. I've there. seen that. He would grab the ball and throw it back out. Yeah. That was an epic movie. <laughs> That's cool. Matt, what's this fit you're wearing today? This is brand new. I've never seen you dress yeah, I, like I, this before. I, I usually I know. wear he, he a white or like black this. shirt. He came here last yeah, time dressed like this. You got these khaki, you got like semi baggy khaki pants on, and you got some brand new boots. Like you just bought them today. They ain't, they don't have a scuff on them. Not true. I bought them about a month and a half ago. <laughs> he was wearing the ha- same well, How many outfit? times you wore them? <laughs> I've worn them. I, I, I wear them every once in a while. What'd I you wear do them a few today? Times a week. Um, I mean, I had to meet these two women. I had to come over here. What I, today? I painted. You just wanted to stomp up in conservative ground. You know what else? You know what I did today? Get the, up, get up, stand. <laughs> put, take your headphones off. Step back. We want to see your outfit right it now. It looked like you just started working at the Pinellas County Nature Park or something <laughs> for the county. <gasps> Look at this guy. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Look at this guy. This is not the normal Matt Look Cox at this guy. attire. He's got the belt to match. Look. <laughs> <laughs> There's so. <laughs> Matt, you're glowed up, bro. There's more behind this. What is going on here? Who took you shopping? No. Did you go mudding today or something? <sighs> I don't know what to say. All right. He's got the tight, breathable shirt tucked in with the belt. <clears throat> yes, yeah, just uh, this isn't normal Matt Cox no. attire. I'm I not. mean, I, I'm trying, I, I, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I, that way. I had, you know. Step up my game a little bit. I can't keep wearing the same white shirts all the time. Mm. So, you know, periodically you got to throw in, you know, something, a green one. And it was kind of form fitting and looked good. You makes know. you look buff. Makes me look good. Well, Lost about buff. 10 pounds. 10 pounds? How'd yeah. you lose 10 pounds? You weren't fat before, were you? No, I don't think I was. I, I mean, I just, I had some issues going on. I <laughs> wasn't hungry for a couple of months. Lost some weight. It just caught up with me. Weren't hungry for a couple of months. I just, I don't know. I was just emotionally fucked up. It was a bad time for me. You depressed? I was a little depressed. There was some depression. She's raising her hand. Is it, is it Jess's fault? There Jess? was some depression. And so you I weren't lost, eating? I wasn't eating very much. And I dropped, actually, I dropped probably 15 pounds. Went from like 175 down, down to actually like 158. So, eight, so if you one, weren't eating... You're saying you, you weren't eating before, but now that you're not depressed, you dropped, or you dropped weight. No, before. I dropped weight then. Now oh, I've gotcha. got, now I'm up to, now I've gained up. three okay. or four no, pounds. Gained three or, no, no, I've gained three or four pounds. I'm like 162, 161. Oh. Wow. Actually, I was 160 when I got out of the shower wow. today, but still. You weigh like the same amount as I do. I weigh 165. God, mm-hmm. you're like six foot tall or 5'11". What are you, 5'11"? 5'10". 5'10", whatever. If you're over five foot six, you're a giant. <laughs> <laughs> Oh fuck! So, hey, well, look, you dropped a few pounds, and Jess is back. I, well, yeah, you should have did this months ago. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's a story. We're proud of you. Unbelievable! Matt. You're doing great. Man. Yeah, you're doing really good. <laughs> uh, By the way, you were, you were commenting on my phone. You want to know where I stole it from? <clears throat> where? Vice. Vice. 
Vice. I did it for you, Matt. Nice, nice. Stole it from Vice. They gave Matt his credit. They no, they, they gave me. They also gave me. I love how he said in the last podcast. They paid you. They paid me. He said, "I don't even need the money. I just want the credit." This is no. I know, but then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah. Got he the was credit, in the credits, and now he got the money. Love it. Love it. Nice. And they and they got him on a gag order, so now he can't yeah. say nothing about yeah. Vice. Yeah, I, I feel. I feel like you do about Ben. Ah! <laughs> oh! <laughs> You do. That's actually very, very accurate. <clears throat> Good times. Good times. But I mean, you have anything. What do you want to talk about? What do I want to talk about? I want whatever you want. I don't care. What are you doing? I, What's I, going on? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. Painting. What did you do today? I'm, today, I, I, I <laughs> printed out cue cards. I mean, I or flash, I really wanted to eat a couple gummies and just see where the podcast. I went. printed out fat flashcards for the Forty Eight Rules of uh, Power. What are the Forty Eight? Forty Eight Laws of Power. Forty Eight Laws of Power. From uh, By Robert Green. Robert Green, yeah, I have that book. So I, I made like flashcards. Like I made flashcards with the Forty Eight Laws of Power, and I made flashcards, and I cut them out, and I glued them on the flashcards, and and what you know. you're like studying it, trying to memorize it. I don't know. I think I'm thinking about maybe trying to memorize them. I thought it'd be fun. It's a cool book, but it, after I read that book, I didn't even read the whole book. But it makes you want. It makes oh, you. It's, it it's, changes you a little bit and like how you think because it makes you want to apply those I, laws into your general life and then i noticed i started doing fucking mean, shit i didn't uh, yeah sh- kind of mean shit. shitty sh- stuff not shitty shit but like you just kind of you just you kind of use people a little bit from that and i don't wow. know it's weird man yeah why how explain it to me i don't know it's it, hard to explain but it's like they, they, can you explain it? Just e- even like if somebody was coming, I remember that like when if somebody was coming over, I'd think of a reason for them to stop somewhere and get me something and, and bring it on the way. Something you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, just th- like, they're vicious. They're vicious. Like they're you, total psychopath. That's, that's, that's cult shit. Things out of that's cult shit. No, no, no. no, 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 no. It's weird. It's, it's, it's cult shit. It's power. They're like power. power. <clears throat> it's. Have you heard of Nexium? Okay, so, so it's it's basically their rules to apply to help you succeed in life. But they're, it's not like they're nice rules. No, they're they're there are some harsh, harsh rules. Like it's like, give me one. Um, well, one of them is uh, like I think rule number one is uh, don't uh, don't never outshine the master, mm-hmm. which means your boss never make your boss look bad, never look better than your boss. Mm-hmm. Because although you think you're trying to impress him, what you may be ac- actually end up doing is he may become jealous, he may become uh, you know upset A little fearful about it, of fearful you. fearful of you. So it's like manipulation strategy. It is. Oh, it's yeah, there's tons very of that. manipulative. Ton, there's tons of manipulation strategies. Yeah, in that's it. the word for it. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's there's a bunch of them. There's but it a, is a cool book. There's 48 a bunch of them. There's 48 of them. Yeah. 48 yeah. manipulative laws. To yeah. <clears throat> that that what's so funny is what's great about it is when you when you read it you start seeing it not just in yourself. In like I people. definitely can see some of it in myself. And then there's some things I think you know what I need to start doing that. Yeah. That, yeah. I'm not harsh enough. Like mm-hmm. I'm I tend to forgive people. That screw me over, and I and I and I in this it's like crush your enemies. Yeah, yeah. Not only physically, but in spirit. Like, don't leave one ember burning, mm-hmm. or it will reignite the person, will, and the person will come back and destroy you. I mean, they're they're vicious laws. But I always, you know, what I'm saying that there's these little tiny, there are little tiny things that you think. You know, like I really actually kind of need to do that because yeah. I tend to. If you take them forgive people in little over. pieces. I think it's a good. But. Yeah, and there's other things you notice things in other people, mm-hmm. like you realize that's why he's doing that. Yeah. He's behaving like that because of this. Mm-hmm. That's law number twenty two, or not law number thirty one. And you start going, that's why. Okay, now I know what he's doing. Now I'm going to do this. Have you ever heard of? I'll ask you again. Have you heard of Nexium? I don't. Uh, I've heard the term Nexium, but I I don't know. Or I don't it's know a, what it is. It's, it's a, a drug, right? It's a, no, it's a cult. It was a cult run by a guy named Keith Raniere. <clears throat> Oh, is this where the the sweat log lodge thing? No, or no, no, okay. no, 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 no. It was uh, it's basically a cult where they stole basically everything out of out of Scientology, and they stole all kinds of sh- shit from Tony Ro- Tony Robbins. One of the founders, they taught like all the strategy of all the strategies of Tony Robbins, all the shit that Scientology teaches you, like get in there, better your life, push out all the negative influences, figure out how to work your mind and and be successful, and and. All of their victims were super successful, wealthy people. A lot of them had money. A lot of them were like came from royal families, and um, this guy was just like he was a crazy, super successful entrepreneur. First, like he started a, a Ponzi scheme, made fucking tons of money. It was a, not a Ponzi scheme; it was an MLM, 
and he uh, he got in trouble for that. He didn't go to prison for it, but he got in trouble, and they had to dissolve the company. <laughs> but he made millions of dollars, and, like, this guy was just, like, a hustler, and he was, like, a very, like, short, fat, awkward look proportioned human being. He was, like, a... He looked like... He was, like, Charles Manson stature, but, like, fat, kind of chubby, and... And he was just fucking just driven, successfully, like, driven to, like, make money, to, like, build this big company. And he created this company called Nexium, where it was all about, like, personal power. And it was, like, one person would recruit another person, just like a multi-level marketing right. scheme. And uh, they would bring him in, and eventually it turned into sex trafficking. It turned into this. Wow, that turned left oh, quick. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> eventually it was, like, women getting branded. He, could, he, he, he mind-fucked all these people. To believing that they were a part of this great thing, and uh, well, so did that Scientology. Yeah, he did some fuck shit like and that too. They were branding each other. All the women were branding themselves with him and his initials. Um, and uh, he was like raping, raping twelve year olds and shit, like convincing Ooh, them that was their pathway to enlightenment was to have sex with him. Like he would convince the higher pe the higher ups in his in his company, the cult, that convince like tell them like to tell the women like, hey, if you really want to to get up in this, you know, and really like elevate yourself in Nexium, you have to seduce Keith. This was like his plan that he would tell the higher ups to convince mm. the lower level women. And then they would now be trying to sleep with him to like raise their status and their spiritual enlightenment. And it was just this crazy. I just watched the whole documentary on, on HBO. It's fucking bananas. What's the name of it? It's called the vow, the vow, the vow. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, he, he fucking Can paid the, HBO? He paid the Dalai Lama like a million dollars to have a meeting with him and so they could videotape it and make himself look legit. Mm. And the Dalai Lama met with him and the Dalai Lama was like questioning him. He's like, well, he's like, I don't know. He's like, a lot of people say a lot of negative things about you. You've been a part of some weird shit. And he convinced the Dalai Lama. He's like, well, don't they say the same thing about you, Mr. Lama? And like, <laughs> Mr. They, Lama? They say the same thing about everybody. Like, like nice. he, this guy played himself off. Like he, he projected himself as just like this super high IQ genius of a man who was uh, a judo master at age 12. He was like, could play the piano like Beethoven. He knew he was a mathematician. He was a scientist. And in reality, he was none of this stuff. He just projected himself like this and all these people were in awe of him. And he just fucking took control of all these people over all these years. And now he's in, in prison for life. Would you but consider him a con man? Oh, bro. He was the definition of a con man. He was the Good fucking times. most... He was the purest form of a con man you've ever seen. He ripped off everything. Everything from Scientology, from Tony Robbins, and, and, and cr made it look like he fucking created all of this himself. And... Uh, Anyways, it was. It reminds me of that book that you were just talking about. A lot, of the, just, kind, I, a lot of the same kind of shit. When you introduce people... Too, those kinds of ideas mm -hmm. for the first time. Well, they'll, they'll say well, stuff like in that book, it, it's like law 31 or whatever. Right. And it, it's like, you know, create large scale like acts of, you know, to make yourself seem godlike, you know, right. um, it, emphasize enthusiasm over um, over, you know, you know, facts or whatever, you know, oh, you know, over reason, you know, um, do you like, it's got all these different techniques on how to make yourself seem huge and, you know, amazing when in fact it's, it's just bullshit, but it, it's really, it's, it's a lot of what you're saying right, right there seems very much right out, taken right out of that, those yeah. laws. And it's the same thing as Scientology as well. No, I don't know. And, and a th one means, thing but. they do, one thing they do to the women that go, that join that company, it, it's like, they have this relationship to where the person above you is your master and you're considered their slave. So there's this thing called uh, um, collateral. So if you want to elevate in the company and make more money, um, you have to give them collateral, meaning you have to give them like your darkest secrets or send them like nude photos of yourself so that if you ever come out or want to leave, they have this against you because they're like, oh, we're giving you access to all this high level information. We need collateral from you. The hmm. same thing is like, you know how Scientology does uh, the auditing? They, they do like those auditing sessions where you confess, confess like your deepest, darkest secrets and thoughts and ideas and everything. And they, they make notes of everything, like everything from your past or whatever. Okay. 
it's the same kind of thing. It's called auditing in Scientology. This thing, it was just called, in Nexium, it was just called uh, collateral, where you just give them dirt on yourself, basically. Seems like a bad idea. Hmm. Mm. But these people were brainwashed enough to do it. I it's like the branding us. part. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm no, good with the branding. Yeah, yeah, you know, just brand all your women. Yeah. I, I'm thinking about. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking, thinking about doing that. Yeah, I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking about having Jess get a, a tattoo on her arm that says "Property MC. of Matthew Bevan <laughs> <Yeah>. Cox." <laughs> yeah, I think that's reasonable. I oh, was this close to having her talking into it the other day. Brands are cool. Brands are cooler than tattoos. We know a couple of tattoo artists. Yeah, we can make brands this hurt. Happen. Do that, but it's, at least it's all at once. Yeah, yeah. It's over quick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're it's gonna not an hour session. No, no. Four, we're talking five seconds. Four, four to eight hours of the course of two weeks. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. Let's just let's get this over with. Mm. Where did this guy do all that stuff at? It was in uh, New York, like uh, I think it was Albany, New York. That's where that's where that shit was based out of. Is Albany. That near Albany. Albany. <laughs> Whatever. Albany. Albany. <laughs> you think Frank Amadeo likes the uh, Forty Eight Laws of Power? He listen. You think yeah. he follows all forty eight rules? Absolutely. Hey, pull up a picture of Keith Ranieri. I want to show him a picture of him, or like an interview with him or something. <laughs> he could be Amadeo. Yeah. He he is very. I mean, bro. You know what's weird though is like all these people like uh, this guy, um, uh, Charles Manson. Uh, who else? Who's another big? Uh, uh, who's the leader of Scientology? Miscavige. They're all short guys. The Compensating for something? They're all short guys. Compensating for the shortness? I don't know, hmm. but is is that a thing? Like, they're not only are they short, but they're like oddly proportioned. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like this is. I don't know. I don't know. Is maybe, there a connection? Maybe that could drive you. To is there a connection there? Shed that Why image you of yourself. Me? I, I don't, don't know. I don't know. We're having a conversation, Matt. <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's implying you're one of those people. <laughs> I was maybe say. you're one of those people. <laughs> Keith Ranieri, R E I. Just type in like N E X I V M. You'll find him. So why did he go to prison for life? Uh, but they got him for uh, they got him for uh, like basically like cooking the books of his company and sex sex trafficking, and uh, I forget I forget his actual charges, but they they nailed him down. Pretty I good. love that you got you have the the same the uh, the same image of you know God and Adam. That you used to have the painting of. Yeah. I like that. You the consistency. Yeah. It's nice. As soon as you make it. So you should have framed the TV with like that gold frame. I know. I wish like I could the have picture. Done that. You could do that. And it would have looked like that. a picture, so. Yeah. That'd be cool. Those frame TVs are expensive as fuck. You just, yeah, but you could you frame, frame this frame, one. I'm frame saying. this one. Yeah, yeah. You I could just I could just frame. like custom custom make a wood frame. <laughs> Fucking <sighs> Michaels will do it for you. Damn, Austin, expensive. what's going on, bro? Yeah. He's going to have Jesus. Crazy. Why would he do that? He can buy you a six pack and grab you with some two by fours. And right, you, right. You he'll knock borrow out. the drill from the next door. We built this table. Yeah. This guy looks like. Uh, yeah, he doesn't look oddly proportioned. You got to see a full body shot of him. Like, this is just from the chest up. Okay, look at it. Yeah, look at that picture of him. You can blow, I don't know if you can blow that up. But look at him. Looks like Spielberg. You know, does he look like a fucking dork? I just think it looks like somebody from the 1980s or 90s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, a bad suit and, and baggy ass suit. And he has like mo the mo haircut. Yeah. Maybe it was very Christmas. Have you ever heard of um have you heard of Heaven's Gate? Yeah, of course. That's Love Heaven's crazy Gate. Crazy cool. That guy was nuts. Never heard of it. Oh my! Like, what? You've never heard of Heaven's Gate? Was it a hundred? Oh my god! You gotta watch that documentary, bro. Sixty? Li, li, was it sixty? Thirty-five people. people. Thirty-five people that <laughs> this wearing is my favorite wearing Air Jordans. Air Jordan no, and the the full jumpsuit. They did like a yep. Nike jumpsuit and, and like Nike tennis shoes or Air Jordans. Yes. Whatever it was, and they all took poison and killed themselves. Yeah. Because mm. there was a comet coming by, um, by the Earth. What was the comet name? Uh, Hale Bop. Yeah, but coming close to the um, close to Earth, it was like it was like it was like a hundred million miles from Earth, yeah, which is close, yeah. which is close, and and you know, I guess pull up the trailer. They're the ones that and drink up, the Kool Aid. Pull up the tra no, no, that's, no, no, that's, that's, Jim that's Jones. Jones. Mm. That's Jonestown. Pull up uh, that was almost a thousand people. That yeah, that was a lot. Right? Trailer. No, no, the On Heaven's YouTube. Gate. They thought in the tail of the comet was a spaceship following it. That was no wrong one, and they were going to go, and their souls would go up into the spaceship. No, 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 no. What no. if they did? Yeah. That's Heaven's Gate. 
Heaven's Gate cult documentary trailer. What huh? if what if their spirits did? I know that's maybe what I say. they could have maybe they could have. But bro, they I mean it's as silly as it's as silly as Christianity. <laughs> You're Why right. not? Anything Who's else? To say? But still, uh, the Nikes. No, really, it's I didn't understand bit, what kind of Nikes were. It's they, a little bit you know? sillier. Like were they Jordan <laughs> ones or what? The cult of cults. This this documentary. Yeah, Fuck this, it. this is this is the leader of it. This guy. Yeah. Did he? Watch did, this, watch did, this, watch didn't this. he cut his? Didn't he cut himself? Oh yeah, they tried to castrate each other because they. May or may not. You think they just decided to fucking Nikes? Nikes. They weren't Jordans. What kind of Nikes are they? Air Maxes, I think. They convinced them all that they were aliens, destined for a higher, to transcend their bodies. Beam me up, Scotty. I mean, everybody wants to say, oh, those are those crazy people. <clears throat> I would never do that. Do I look brainwashed? Yeah. Mm, not so fast. They were well educated, often from very good families. It's definitely an alien. <laughs> Sold. That was a good documentary, bro. You would like it, bro. You should get high and watch it. You, <laughs> you, think, they, you think it works? You want to get some Nike. It convinced them that if they wanted to be immortal and transcend into a higher level of existence, they had to commit, they had all kill themselves at the same time. Did so they, they all they get it. castrated? No, after after the first guy got castrated, it went so wrong. It went really left. It went left hard. And the castration is so wrong. Well, they had one in of the general, right? one of the that- cult. One of the people in the cult was like a ex nurse or whatever. She's like, I, I kind of know. I know what I'm doing or whatever. So she helped. Oh, I know what I'm doing. Kinda. She, she assisted. In the <laughs> I got work. a pocket knife. Yeah. So she assi- I guess she helped with the first castration, and it went so bad they had to rush him to the ER because he was like bleeding out. And uh, after that, they didn't do any more castration. castration. Uh, uh, we don't really have to do this, you know. <laughs> I mean, we thought we did, but we actually don't have because to do this it felt, anymore. felt like a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because aliens, the alien, humanoid alien beings that we're all accustomed to seeing or accustomed to being familiar with from, like, sci-fi films, whatever, they're genderless. They have no balls or dick or vagina. So that's what they wanted to do. They all wanted to become genderless. Now you don't have to cut your nuts off to do that. Yeah, now you don't have to cut your nuts off to do it. True. They were ahead of the time. Mm. <laughs> they were just ahead of the curve. <laughs> All right. That what shit else? That was wild, bro. <laughs> what the hell? I'm not sure it was Jonestown. Same. Jonestown was. That was a while. I did watch the documentary. I, I have was... not watched that one yet. Mm-hmm. Oh, that man. one's dark. That's yeah. the darkest one yeah. of all. Listen, that he, he, they. <laughs> A couple they of them made to, it, right, though? Some of them, ran of them off, didn't drink it. Ran off into the woods. Wasn't yeah. there, like, a senator who flew down there? Yeah, they killed him. And they shot him. Yeah, they shot him. <laughs> I mean, him and his and his whole kind of staff that went down. Like, they went to Jonestown because there was they'd gone to, what, Guyana? And yeah. they'd moved there, and they'd created Jonestown, and they were building this utopia. And, you know, they're all not doing well, and they stopped talking to their family. And so, finally, the senator who's been petitioned by... Fa- tons of family members flies down there to set just to kind of check inspect the whole thing and everybody's saying everything's great everything's good and they're like oh no we're happy we're they're shaking oh no look hi how are you shaking his hand and, mm-hmm. and the people are putting notes in his fucking hand saying help me get me out of here no. i'm being held against my will i don't remember and, that part right so then they um 
whatever uh, I forget what's the name is Jonestown, but it's, what's Jones? His last name's Jones. Jim Jones. Jim, Jim Jones, Jones. Yeah, Jim Jones finds out. Well, he tells him just before I think the senator mm-hmm. tells Jones, li- Jim Jones, listen. I got issues. There's some issues. Like some of these people are being told. Yeah, we got a problem. Yeah, we got a problem. We're going back to Washington. We'll let you know what we come up with. And they go back to the airport. Ooh. Look at little splash. Water, you know. And Jim Sorry, Jones water, sends too. his private peep, his private security. That's good. Sends his private security to stop them. And they have a shootout and they kill him. And then they come back and they, they now know. That the government's going, like the U.S. government's going to come in. They're going to come in and, and and grab him. So he convinces everybody that it's the end of days, you know, and that they're coming. And he convinces everybody to drink the um, drink the Kool Aid. It well, actually wasn't even Kool Aid. It was an, it was, was an Kool-Aid. off. Well, it, it was, but it's an off. It wasn't oh, it was Kool Aid. It wasn't the brand. Yeah, it yeah. was a knockoff brand of Kool Aid, and it was laced with cyanide. But and isn't some other that stuff. isn't that how that whole analogy drank the Kool Aid yeah, started? Yeah, that's that's, that's where, where it came they, from. That's where it I'm originated. not drinking the Kool Aid. Right. Listen, bro, I ain't drinking the Kool Aid. That's crazy, bro. That was the biggest. I used to say that in RDAP all the time. That I ain't drinking the Kool Aid. What's okay? RDAP? It was the drug program in prison. It's, oh. it's like a cult, practically. <laughs> yeah. You get in there and guys start. They start saying stuff, and I I always say, listen, bro, like I'm not I'm not drinking the Kool Aid. Cults Kool-Aid. are interesting. Super they're interesting. so interesting because they're so, they're just like religions, except for a couple key things like the dis the whole disconnection thing. Like you can't like associate with your family or like you have to disconnect with them if they they call you a suppressive person. Like that's how it is in Scientology and with Nexium. Like if somebody talks, well, they would they would always re- and, and they would remove like most cults try and get you away from all your family to be in one place like. Right. And that way, you're so rounded by everybody else who has the same thought process. Before you know it, you just become brainwashed. Right. Crazy. And it's all like a lot of them are smart people, which is crazy yeah. too. Have you? Have you? Did you ever read? I think it's Chuck. He wrote Fight Club. I think I want. I'm going to butcher oh, his last yes. name. Oh yes, I love Palnicek. that guy. I love that right. guy. Well, Chuck Palnicek. I want, and I'm probably butchered his last name. He wrote a story called Survivor, and it's about a guy who was in a cult who gets out. And it's it's great. It's really? a great book. Great book. And it talks about all all the cults. As you're going through the book, he's talking. He talks about different. He they keep bringing up different cults. I'm looking this up right now. It's a hilarious book. Listen, he's got Chuck Palmacheck has better books than Fight Club. Mm. And of course, Palin, you know, pa, uh, how do you spell, pronounce that? P P How do you spell A L A P A L A H. N I U K. Yeah, come on. How are you going to say that? How do you say that? Palinuk. I really, but I, I butchered it. Language. Really, the story of Survivor being developed for TV. Which what? Which one is it? Dark comedy from Palinchuk focuses on Tender Branson, a member of the yes. Cretish cult who has survived his religion's latest mass suicide, only to hijack a plane by himself with plans to crash it into an Australian outback, into the Australian outback after he tells his life story. Whoa. Well, it's good. It's a good book. I mean, it's, it's a girl. I don't know what the. I'm gonna check that out. That guy's fucking cool. I love that guy, Chuck Palinuk. Yeah, Fight Club. Honestly, Fight Club, that's a good book. Yeah, but he's got other the book. books. You read the book? Even what Fight Club? Yeah, I read. I read almost all every book he's written. I was in prison. Really? Yeah. How many books did you read while you're in prison? I mean, I read for. I read for like probably the first three years straight. So I don't know. I was it was it was probably a book, maybe two books, probably two books a week for three years. God damn, it was ridiculous. A week? Again, yeah. I guess you got. We, nothing we else have to nothing do. to do. What do you think the difference is between reading a book and listening to a book? Um, have you done both? Yeah, but I mean, I'm a horrible reader. Horrible reader. I'm a better reader now than. Well, than you told me that you just highlighted uh, the speech thing on the phone to listen to articles all the time. So, but do you think there's? I mean, obviously, it's quicker to listen to a book. But do you think you grasp it? Well, I the think same? everybody's different. Do you think you digest it the same way? No, I, I, I think for me, listening to it, I retain more listening to it than I do reading. Really, it because I have such a hard time reading. I think the opposite. But, but you're probably a great reader. No, but I'm not. I'm a slow reader. It takes me, it takes me four times the time to read a book than it would for me to listen to a book. Because sometimes I go back and I reread it. If I, didn't, I have to go back, I can barely read. Like I read one paragraph. I'm like, did I, did I get that right? I got to read it again. Yeah, I, I I just listen. Yeah, you get, but I had no choice in prison. You just got to read it, right? Yeah, you you there's no way to get audiobooks in prison. 
Could get like a little iPod or something. <laughs> for a no. pretty penny, you can. No. I mean, yeah, if you want some guy's suitcase, is it for you, maybe. But I mean, fuck it. No. 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 He's no. no. I, you know what's so funny is like in the county jail and stuff, you know, in the count, like now in the county jails and most prisons, they're giving you iPads and all kinds of stuff. Like they're turning it's a, it's a money making right. venture now. Right. More so than it ever has been. How do you think, how do you think reading, how many books do you think you read while you're in prison total? I don't know. I, I think, I think two a week is probably. So total. Though. In, it was definitely two, it was definitely two a week in county. When I was in county, in the county lockup, that was for a year. So that's over a hundred, over a hundred right then. Really? Um, and then I would say, let's say 70 when I got to prison for about two years, 70s. I don't know. So. About 250 books within three years. Wow. Mm. How many books do you think you've read in your lifetime? Single digits. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like the same way. Book? I was the same yeah. way. Before prison, I was the same way. I probably read 10 Dr. Seuss books front to back. <laughs> same if way. those count. But like <sighs> big books? Psh, nah. I remember one hour. time in middle school, they were like, you, they took the whole class to the library. You got to pick a book. You got to read it. You got to write the fucking whatever. You got to write something on it. I'm like sweating, walking up and down the aisles. Where's the smallest book? And then I had the best idea. I'm like, you just buy a book that's about a movie and you watch the movie. Take a couple notes, write a paper. Oh, I got wow. fucking E.T. out of the library. Went and watched the movie. I already seen it a hundred times. I'm a kid. Easy. Nailed it. Didn't read a page. <laughs> Not one. That's genius. Mom's like, what are you doing taking notes watching E.T.? Like, I got a report. <laughs> you know, Miss <laughs> Willis, I got to turn this in tomorrow. Miss Willis. <sighs> you know, Crazy. You know, uh, you know how the, they'll take the book and then they obviously they have to, they have to um, adapt it uh, for like a, for a movie. So you yeah. got a 300 page book. Yeah. You can't, you, unless you want a 12 hour mini series, you can't. So they chop it up, right? But two, there were two books that I've read that when I saw the movies, they were almost identical. One was Fight Club and one was Catch Me If You Can. Almost identical really? because they're so small. Fight Club was like 190 pages. Did you hear what China just did to Fight Club? Mm -mm. China just changed the ending. What? Why? You know how China manipulates all of their media and all of their internet and everything? Right. <laughs> they just changed the ending for Fight Club. So if you watch Fight Club in China, it's no longer like the city falling now it's the FBI comes in and arrests Tyler Durden. Wow. Really? I'd like to watch that. Yep. Why? I wonder why. Because they don't like the idea. They don't like the idea. Take it down. Take it, take it down. They don't like anarchy. Right. They, it's frowned upon there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could say that. <laughs> they haven't embraced it like we have here. They're not, they're not, they're not trying to cap, um, take the capital. <laughs> There'll no, be they're no, not taking the There'll be no there. Russian Congress in, in <laughs> yeah. China. Could you imagine video footage in See, China of people taking over the Capitol? Oh, my God. That'd be a hell of a movie. Bro, I mean, they've already, they've already made a bunch of documentaries about January 6th. Bro. Good uh, times. Well, the QAnon one. What's the QAnon one? Uh, Into the Storm. That's a fucking crazy documentary. Talk about a cult, it. bro. Politics is like a cult. Close. It's kind of like a cult. Right? It's like the fine line between cults and religion. And it's so stuff it's like so that, it's right? the same thing. Like cults, religions, cults just in a tip over the line do some weird politics. Shit. This podcast sucks. Does it? <laughs> we can stop it right and now. And I'm a part of it. If you're not having fun, sell we can, something. If you're not having fun, we can turn <laughs> it off. I'm having fun. Well, I mean, you're. I mean, how much stuff do you guys have in front of you? I we have, get we have tested. marijuana. We have smelling salts. We have scotch. We have Coke, the cola, cane. No cocaine. If if Tyler, if if Matt's probation officers listen, it's no cocaine. Just Coca Cola. Coca Cola. Coca Cola. Coca -Cola. China changes the Fight Club film ending, so the authorities win. <clears throat> the ending of the cult 1990 cult film Fight Club has been removed for viewers in China and replaced by a screen with a message saying the authorities won. <laughs> Scroll wow. down a little bit. They're not even they're not even trying to be subtle about no it. No production value at all. 
Just fucking text on a screen. Scroll down, Austin. All right, hold on. Yeah, I want to see Paul what Chuck said about it. He says, "Oh yeah, what did Chuck say?" He says, "This is super wonderful. Everyone gets a happy ending in China." <laughs> you think there's a pun in that? That's great. He said, "This is super wonderful. Everyone gets a happy ending in China." That is fucking ep. He is fucking so smart. He is so <laughs> funny, bro. I'm subscribed to his Substack. I don't know what that is. You know what Substack is? No. no. Substack is like an email subscription thing. So like like, uh, reporters or journalists or writers like him who write all the time, like you subscribe to their email list. Substack is like a – it's like think of like YouTube but for also for like writing shit. And people subscribe to it and they pay you like a dollar a month or five dollars a month or ten dollars a month or whatever. It's It's like Patreon kind of but for like people like him. So they don't have to be tied Mm -hmm. to like – you know, they don't have to like depend on big mainstream corporate media to pay their bills. They can just have the people pay for their shit. Right, just, just like YouTube. Get a subscription to the articles. Right. Okay. So, you, so you pay like five bucks a month and you can get all of his content that he writes every single day that he, that he's interested in. <clears throat> I'm trying to think what an, a, another one I wrote, read was a uh, choke. They actually made a movie about choke, which was an, it was a, another great, great book of his. Really? Monster, Monster, Monster was good. There was one called Monster. It wasn't as good as Choke and and, and um, Survivor. It was great. I've watched both of his. He did a couple podcasts with Joe Rogan. I just watched those. Okay. And you know uh, that's how I became a fan of his. Yeah. Well, the, obviously after watching Fight Club. I think he got like ten thousand dollars for Fight Club. Like he sold the really. Like, yeah, well, he it was. And he was. He said at the time I was thrilled to get it because he said like I had written the book. He said, I mean, nobody was interested in publishing it. He found the pu- publisher said, look, uh, we'll give you 10 grand for it. That's all you get. No royalties. Here's 10 grand. He's like, okay. I'm sure he sold a lot of books from that, though. Well, yeah, but he didn't get any royalties. Oh, but On he, his book. On the other books. You're right. Oh. Right. No, no. He, he didn't sold, even write the book. No, like he so- I'm pretty sure he sold it for 10 grand. Oh, he sold the and book. And never got any royalties. I thought he sold like the movie deal part of no, it. No, oh, I no. I got you. For my, my, and I could be wrong. But you know, keep in mind that that's what turned him into a massive. Yeah, yeah. I'm you know, sure it paid off. Right. I'm pretty sure. I, I'm pretty sure I got that right. But yeah, because he said I remember him saying, "Look, it wasn't at the time. It was a ton of money for me, <clears throat> and I was thrilled to be. I was now a published author, or whatever he was. You know, he was like, I was thrilled. You know how he got the idea? He said he had gone camping, and the guys at, at the other campsite were playing loud, loud music. I think he said I got up. You know, and it was just disturbing everybody. That he got up and went over and said, "Hey, can you guys turn your radio down?" And the guy mouthed off to him, and they mouthed off back and forth. He said, "And we ended up getting into a fist fight." He said, "I got beat up." He said, and "That's when he sat down. And he thought, you know what? I'm like I've never like been in a fight like, and I just got beat up. Like I don't even know how to defend myself." Mm-hmm. And he said, and "That's that was that sparked the whole concept for Fight Club." Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. That's great. Do you know that um, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I hope you had the camera on Matt when the, oh, for that pause. <laughs> Matt was like, hey, you know what? what? I, I need, a, I need a, a hoodie. I got hoodies. I got smalls. Yeah. Yeah. Small. <laughs> what color do you want? I want a large. I want a large. Cause I no, you gave me a medium small. last time. You gave me a medium. It was tight. Was it? Yeah, medium. it was too small. I can get you. Large. Oh, but you know what? I'm, I've lost some weight. It might work. It'd probably work now. Good now. Look like you got some muscle going. Uh, it's been just, working out. This is all for show. This is I'm I'm weak as a, a small child. And are you okay, I'm bro? Trying to, I'm trying to remember He's what I. Done. I'm trying to remember what I was going to say about Chuck. <laughs> I had something funny to say, but I forgot wow. what it was. Lost it. In he's in good shape. Either. Oh yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's pretty buff. I'm trying to think of the other books I read of his. God, there was another one. Oh, I remember what I want to say to you. Have you ever read Stephen King's book on writing? No. Pretty interesting. You know what's funny? The only Stephen King books I like are the serious ones. Like all of his books about that are like about that are scary or about you know aliens or Cujo. Yeah, I, but Cujo's good. Okay, oh, so okay. okay, wrong. Sorry. <gasps> I'm saying typically like the ones where they go off on you know. 
whatever the strain or you right. know like like those types like I don't like any of those but when he you know like misery oh, or yeah. the green mile or you know those are Shawshank I think he wrote Shawshank yeah. like like those are amazing and then but everybody's known for all the the horror books and stuff and I don't really like any of that I don't really like those the more fiction it gets the the less war, you like I, it. I don't I don't like them but yeah. the serious ones he's you know the those are like amazing his you book know he did Shawshank. I'm pretty sure he did, did Shawshank. He? I don't think didn't, he did. No, Austin, I, think, I didn't know Austin he did the Green who Mile wrote, either. Who wrote Shawshank Redemption? No, but his, but he did Misery, right? I don't know. Uh, well, you I guys make so. me second. You're so so sure about it. Now you're making me oh, second. I'm not sure. I'm just saying I didn't um, know. I was surprised. Uh, all I know Stephen King for is like it. <laughs> King Shawshank. Shawshank. Bro, he was Sick, he was he? broke like late into his 40s. Like he had no money. And he hit big on Aunt, uh, what was the girl's yeah, name? Yes, Stephen Annie? King, Shawshank Redemption. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I well, didn't know that. What was his first one? His first big one? His first big sale yeah. where he made it, he got rich off was Annie. Annie, the little red haired girl. Yeah, the girl who goes to prom and then and then uh, the hard knock life. Annie, is that what it's called? <laughs> no, no, you're think. Um, no, I know, I know you're talking about uh, where she can set fires and right. Well, the girl that gets made fun of in high school, and they go to prom, and then, and then she sets the whole building on fire. Right, or exactly. Didn't they just remake that? What well, is the Shawshank by? Uh, is that him or no? Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, Carrie, I think Carrie, Carrie. Yes, Carrie. Andy, you said that right? Andy, Andy Dufresne. Yeah. Oh, here. Oh, you did? I'm sorry, we can't hear with the headphones on. Yeah, Carrie. That was his first That was his first hit. Yeah, Misery. Uh, Misery, the novel by Stephen King. Yeah, he wrote that too. That's wow. it. I, I okay. saw the movie. That's a good movie. Yeah. Bro, he talks What's that about, lady's name? Oh, God, what is her name? Oh, she was so scary. Oh, she's scary. So scary. Shit. Oh, and you know, in the book, like they, you know, they hobble him and they, like she just breaks his, like in, in the book, like they, she cuts his feet off. Mm -hmm. You know how they, uh, like when slaves would run away, they would cut the... Port the for first part of your foot. Who off. plays the guy in that movie? Is that fucking Vince oh. Vaughn? No, it's some guy who looks <laughs> like him, isn't it? No, no, it was um. No, I forget what is his name. How old is the movie? It's some somebody uh, weird you wouldn't ex expect to play that yeah, role. Yeah. I, I can if I can. If What's I can. that lady's name? Roseanne. Uh, no, no. Ke uh, it's Kathy like Bates. Roseanne. Kathy Bates and James Ca uh, James Franco. Can uh James Kane. <laughs> James Kane, I have no idea that was. Uh C A A N. Am I saying that wrong? C A what? C A A N. Yeah, she's, she's I've never seen that. that I've never seen that. Oh my oh, god, man. bro. Classic. He's a right you love it. He's a writer, he writes novels like like love no lo or, mm -hmm. or, or um romance, romance novels, and she loves the characters and novels, and then he like has his his manuscript or something with him, and she knows where he goes to type his manuscripts. And when she's coming back, she actually, I think, whatever she does, she causes an accident or something. She finds him, brings him to her house. I think she make causes the accident, yeah. and she reads the manuscript, and she's disappointed because in the manuscript, oh yeah, she makes he, him rewrite it or something, she, right? Yeah, she didn't like the way it ended. Yeah, she wants him to rewrite so she it. Traps him in the house, right? Fucking makes oh, him rewrite yes. it. He talks about this whole thing in the book, uh, his own uh, his own autobiography book uh, on writing. Oh, okay. I, remember, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, that was yeah. fucking crazy. And then he tries to get away. Yeah, and, and she cuts his feet off. Right in the book. In the book, she she hobbles him. She take cuts the first portion of his foot off. Right, so he can still. He's got his heels, his toes. Yeah, yeah it cuts basically a little bit behind the toes. Cuts the toes off. The bunions. Right, so you can't run. You can't really. You kind of like you know. Yeah, you're, you're like on stilts. Up, yeah, you cut half your foot but off. But in the movie, she just breaks his legs. Oh, so yeah. she kind of breaks his feet. Like, and she's like a hardcore fan of his. His oh, knuckles. Yeah. Knuckles. I mean, wait, no, your, I your gotta ankles. watch that movie. Ankles. Oh yeah, it's a good movie. Classic, bro, man. bro. His book. You should listen to it. You should listen to his audio book. It's fucking good, bro. He Who, talks Stephen King. Yeah. He talks about his whole process on writing and how he writes, and like how he has to set up his own little space where he does it. How he's learned because you know he was at one point when he was writing cu shit like Cujo, his best work. He was locked in a room, fucking doing rails of cocaine, drinking tons of fucking whiskey, f eating pills. He was fucked up. Mm. Why is she writing? <laughs> Maybe I should try it, huh? I mean, that's all you're missing. Bro, he <laughs> right, was, is a fucking couple books. <laughs> he was doing mountains of coke and writing these stories. Nice. Like, how crazy Give is that? Give me a pen. 
<laughs> just say yeah, that's a problem. You just don't have a pen and a piece of paper. Yeah. Like it's fucking. That's wild. Could you like? I can imagine trying to be productive doing that kind of shit. I mean, I, I, I don't, don't know. know. Some people are crazy. Like, who's that guy that did Fear and Loathing? He was crazy like that, too. Hunter oh, S. Thompson. Oh, yeah, Hunter yeah. Thompson. He used to take all sorts yep. of fucking Oh, yeah, he was gnarly drugs. the same shit, yeah. A lot of those guys do What that. was the stuff called that we were talking about? Adrenochrome. Adrenochrome. Have you ever heard of adrenochrome? No. It's when you they, they take it out of babies. They, like, take the blood out Not of babies. Not necessarily babies, or, but typically or young younger humans. It's adrenochrome, so it's like adrenaline, like pure adrenaline from young children, and it supposedly makes you. Who thinks this crap up? Like, hey, you know, what? bro, go to Bohemian <laughs> really Grove. Jack us. They, they say, really it's, they awesome. say it's real. It's real shit. No, but I'm saying that's what I'm saying. Who thinks? Hey, you know what would really be good? Awesome. Let's take some adrenaline from small Look children up. and inject that's it. What they Adreno, that's what I want. Adrenochrome. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah, he wrote Green Mile. Man, I didn't know he oh, wrote I, all I that I knew stuff. he wrote Green Mile. Yeah, I didn't know that. Bro, he's all of his best shit was done when he was on coke. He says it in his book. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking wild, bro. Oh my god. Wild shit. Now he's like, what is he worth? He's worth like a fucking billion dollars. It's mm. outrageous. Then he got hit by it. Didn't he get hit by? Oh a, yeah, he got a, hit. By, yeah, he got hit by a car. Right. First of all, he was like jogging along like a a reg, like a road. Like, what are you doing? You're jogging, you're on the country fucking road, you're jogging along or something like that, and some guy, like, veers off the road and runs you over. Like, I get it, you live in the country, but... He was in another country, wasn't treadmill. he? No, no, he was, like, in, I think he was just in, the con- in, in like, the countryside or oh, something. Oh, really? I think. And it was, like, a minivan ran him over, like, oh, my God. Wow. I mean, it's just embarrassing. Nobody probably deserves turned to, that into a, into a story. Nobody deserves to die by a minivan. I feel like some people just do their best work, like, there's a certain point in their life where they just, like, create the best shit. Like, people like him, like, creative people. And then it's, it's and over. Then, and then after that, there's, like, a... It's, like, an uphill, uphill, uphill. They hit a peak, and then there's, like, it's downhill from then on. Like, there's a certain... That's where I'm at. The money. That's where I'm at. <laughs> the money comes in. Where are you down, at? You're down. on the down? <laughs> on the downhill. Yeah, but sometimes you can find another little... Another hill after that. I just need a little one. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's sell some paintings. I mean... Austin, are you having trouble? Yeah, it's pretty hard. Adrenochrome. Adreno, A D R E N O chrome. Jesus. Adreno chrome. Oh my God. Did I? I didn't bring any Marilyn Monroe's. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I have some Marilyn Monroe's. Those also, are big sellers. You didn't bring my Gucci man either. The biggies. Are no, I, I'll, I'll do that. I didn't know you were serious about the Gucci man. I wasn't positive. Of course I was serious. I mean, we don't know how big do we want Gucci <laughs> Am man. Am I ever not serious? Well, all right. Adreno chrome. Read this for us, Matt Cox. I can't read that. I can't even say it. Adre- I Adrenochrome even- is a chemical compound produced by the oxidation of adrenaline. Adrenaline. It was the subject of limited research in the 1950s through the 1970s as a potential cause of schizophrenia. Cause of schizophrenia. While it has no current medical application, the related derivative compound. What does that say? Carbazochrome is a hemostatic medication. Where does it say small children? Despite the compound's name, it is unrelated to the element chromium. Right, but well, how do you get that? I don't know. I mean, I, I immediately pictured like a couple doctors like <laughs> handcuffing some kids to a bed and they're squirming and there's. You well, know. I think I think it it gets a it gets a play into cults and shit where they say you know people do shit like that. You know how they say Hillary Clinton eats babies and drinks their blood? That's what they're getting from it. Yeah. But. Oh, my God. And this is, what happened, what about this, the Hillary Clinton, the sex ring <laughs> that was being run out of the. Oh, you mean, Nap- base, you mean Jeffrey Epstein? The basement. Oh, of, Comet uh, Pizza. Pizza Gate. Uh, yeah, Pizza, pizza Gate. Gate. Yeah. Wow, that's just. Yeah. A lot of that is based around this. Yeah. <laughs> It's like they're 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 harvesting kids for this adrenochrome, and then they get freaky like Epstein, and he but builds a crazy. whole damn island. Bro, I'm watching this documentary right now called "It's the Craziest Fucking Documentary I've Ever Seen." It's called uh, "9/11: The New Pearl Harbor," and they go, "It is the deepest dive on all of the little things about 9/11," and basically, bro, it it will fuck it. 
bl- it, they they it's very objective where it's not just like a one-sided thing where they say conspiracy 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 they take all of the uh, conspiracy theory debunkers of 9-11. Like all of the people around the world who say 9-11, it is what the government said it was. Right? right. It was it was Saddam Hussein and uh, Osama bin Laden. That, that, I'm not sure Saddam no, was no, part so of that. They, no, they, they did. That's what they said. They said so that's what they said. The war on terror was that they, they, impl- okay. well, he was they yes, implicated Saddam Hussein. They they tried to. There never was any proof, but they, like there's no there's no proof. But there. that's how they justified Yes, that was the one, Iraq of, one of the ways. Yeah, the one Iraq of the ways. War. Yeah, just like the weapons just of mass like, distress. Right, and, just just like uh, um, Pearl Harbor justified going into Germany, right? Or Japan. Japan. Yeah. Um. Anyways, they make all of the connections. All the they they it's actually they Pearl Harbor up. was they were attacked and then and then right. because they were allies, um, Hitler then. Declared they war against allies. the United States, right, and he right. had already been at war. It's all connected, yeah. There's, yeah, I'll go with that. That's cool. So they, bro, they go all the way down to like, they go as granular as to where they're in the Pentagon with Dick Cheney, and they have old Dick Cheney, Dick Cheney in the Pentagon with his chief of staff, the uh, all of like the the lower da- the lower rung people who are like in there and they're they're tracking the airplane that's he- the last plane that's headed towards the Pentagon, right? They're tracking it from like 80 miles away. And it's like 80 miles out. The kid comes in the room. Sir, 80 miles out. Does the order still stand? Goes away. Sir, 70 miles out. Does the order still stand? Some footage? No, this is all documented on the report. Okay. Um and then he comes back in like every 10 miles he comes in and tells Dick Cheney. He's like, "Sir, 10 miles out." Does the order still stand? What is the order? Not to shoot it down? No, they don't know. But they're they're uh assuming that it's not to shoot the down shoot it down because at ten miles they're not shooting it down. At right. ten, at, they're not shooting it down. At ten miles out, Dick Dick Cheney snaps his neck back and says, Of course the order still stands. And the kid is obviously distraught, and there's multiple people in there that, that testify to this. The kid goes back away. Five minutes later, the plane fucking crashes into the Pentagon. Mm. Okay, another another big thing about the whole Pentagon thing is the Pentagon is a giant like what it's like four stories. It's not a very tall building, right? It's no, like maybe, but it's like the largest building. But it's in like it's the world thirty right acres. It's, yeah, it takes it's up massive. thirty acres, but it's only like four stories tall. Right. So think about it. If you're a hijacker and you're gonna take a plane and crash into the Pentagon, are you gonna take it? The thing took out like four power lines while it was going five hundred miles an hour, fucking. 50 feet above the ground to just to crash into the side of the Pentagon. If you're a hijacker, a fucking low level pilot, who's not a very, not an expert pilot, right. you're just going to crash into the roof of that thing. Cause you're going to, you're going to do way more damage. You're going to cause way more destruction. Rather you have to be like, they make, they make the case that you have to be like, they show flight simulators with trained pilots and they show exactly how hard it would be to fly that plane 50 feet above the ground at the, at the, for the distance he did to crash into the side of the building. Any, any fucking hijacker would just crash into the top because you do more damage and it'd be way easier. So that's just one of the examples they make, which is fucking when they lay out all of the reasons why it's, it's doesn't really match up to like the narrative it fucking really blows your mind do that so now you should watch still, this i'd like to see what you think they about still it. hit the building i mean they hit it. yeah he hit the building but it was the there was point. nobody in that part of the building as well no it there, was were, there were there were some there were like 100 people died they said that area was under construction it, no that 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 part of the building was the only part of the building that had just finished construction they just redid that whole part of the building to make it like they 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 insulated every single wall with Kevlar. They made it fireproof. Oh, yeah. They had they just... Put in the, the windows. Yeah. They just put in new windows. Yeah. Were, so, listen, I was locked up with a guy named Chris Marrero. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris Marrero got, I think, 15 years for um, filing income tax return or filing something to get to get money back for people because it, Chris is one of these. He's a, a sovereign citizen, and he believes that... 
um, the government uses our social security number to borrow money against us and the money doesn't exist and that you get a, a so, listen, it's, it's total like insanity. And he was filing paperwork for people to get them the money back that the government gets for whatever. It's, it's insanity. Yeah. And he ends up obviously good. Then he goes to trial and he ends up getting like 15 years. Um, he believes in every single conspiracy out there. I've never met anybody that can tie conspiracy theories together. And he he was so entertaining for me. Like we would just we would sit there Boziak and I would sit there and go, you know, fuck, what are you doing? I don't know, man. What are you doing? No, no. I go, let's go find Chris. He'd go, Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'd go and we'd talk to Chris and Chris would go on and on and on. I bet you he's got conspiracy theories with nine eleven that would blow your mind. I'm desperate to get him on my podcast. Because Chris will go for 10 hours straight, and and the great thing about him is you can kind of mock him, and it doesn't bother him. Like, he's not going to flip out on you and start swinging. He's not going to throw – you're not going to body uh. slam you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> so, like, but Chris will just go on and on, and, and it, it they're, they're amazing because he, he's like, oh, I can prove it. I, I got the book so-and-so, and, and he gets so jacked up and excited about it. He, and he's hilarious. Right, but here's the thing. What what do you think makes it a conspiracy theory? What what defines it? Like, do you think like the whole everything I explained to you, the whole nine eleven documentary? You like, can we call Chris? What makes it a conspiracy? Yeah. I'm asking you, what makes it a conspiracy theory? That because it's not an it, official uh, report. That, that, What's your definition well, of a conspiracy theory? That that basically you're saying that it's not what it appears to be. Like you know, you're saying it has an ulterior. Uh, um, storyline, or it's it's something mm-hmm. it's something saying more the, the sin, it's something more sinister than what they're telling us. That's the conspiracy theory. Is they're saying this is what it is. It's pretty cut and dry. It's pretty simple. And you're saying no, no. What really happened is something super sinister that they're hiding. That like makes JFK. It. What do you think about JFK? I mean, I think he got shot. He got. Do you think, sh- do you think uh, Oswald act alone? Acted alone. Some it depends on what documentary I watch. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, I think it now I think I've now is accepted. Documentary that said he acted alone. I think now is accepted narrative that he didn't act alone. Right. right. I don't well, think that's, that's just any a, longer disputed. We talked about this last time, like UFOs. Like the government basically came out and said, "Yeah, there's UFOs. We don't know what they are." Yeah. Nobody flipped out. Yeah. Like nobody jumped off a building. Like nobody, nobody. People aren't going nuts. They didn't They're not say storming. anything else but that. But, but I mean, That's they why. slowly kind of let out over yeah. over the course of what fifty years, and now people are so had basically come to the conclusion that they believed there were USOs. So when they finally said, "Hey, there, there are. are, there are," and we actually have some footage. Well, look at people it this are like, way. Yeah, I knew it. No well, look at it this and way. They though. go to work yeah. the next day and pay their mortgage. Look at it this way, though. Like we gotta go. Is so entertaining. If you got Chris on this fuck on this podcast, bro, you can't. I want him on my. I've never meant really mentioned him before because I want him on mine so bad. But he's on an ankle monitor. You got uh, Andrew Bustamante on this podcast. I know. No, he listen. He blows Bustamante out. Bustamante's like a, a, a. He he just. He's a he he's follows a, he's a he, CIA shill according to the ex- comments. Oh yeah, I love that. <laughs> but but he's he's going with the he's going with the the standard line. Yeah. Bustamante's going to go, go with it. He's not yeah, going to go He's not going to go. This guy will go nuts. And he oh, believes in giants. God. He's tied in Christianity oh, with aliens. He's got I mean it's the ins- Anunnaki. Oh my, oh my god. <laughs> We got it, Chris. We have to get we. Oh, Chris ain't lying, bro. Chris is spitting facts. I would love it if he. I would answer. love it if you watched this nine eleven documentary. I want. I want to watch it. I want to know what Chris's I'm send favorite. You, I'm gonna send it number to you right one now. conspiracy theory is. I'm. I'm asking what, what's about what's the number. Ask one? him about specifically about what's the, the plane that crashed into the Pentagon. What do you know okay. about it? What what are you doing? Which where's the f- hold on? Where's the speaker on this? You can tap him right into the to the to the headphones. What? No, it has called him on Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Hey, no, listen, I'm doing a podcast, and I have a quick question for you, Chris. What? My question is, what do you think happened in 9/11? What really happened? We're having a discussion about it. It was a total inside job. Did Cheney ask him this? Wait, so this guy has this thing about uh, Ch- uh, what's, what's the question? <clears throat> Did Cheney have a do not shoot down order for the planes? Yeah, NORAD, he, he made NORAD stand down. Because there was a bunch of there was a bunch of training games going on on like in like the Midwest United States, so all and of the, the fighter jets. At the same time, there was a training going on, correct? So they were confused as to what the hell they were supposed to do. 
Was he really confused? Where's this guy live? I need to get him on here. Oh, bro. He's, the, the, he's, there was also, if you realize, there was also something called the New American. And the New American was a um, was a group that got together, one of these, um, you know, mind together groups. And they said they needed an incident like a New Pearl Harbor. Have you watched the documentary, 9-11, the new, new Pearl Harbor? They needed an incident like a New Pearl Harbor. Because they needed to get rid of Saddam Hussein. There were no weapons of mass destruction, as you know. That was all right. bullshit. It was all sold by CNN. And they needed to get rid of Gaddafi, but that had already happened. <clears throat> but anyway, it was all an inside job. If you look at Building 7, Building 7 fell down Makes on no its sense. own imprint, and there was no plane that hit it. Yep. Yeah, but the, the Building 7 thing, that... that I don't know about Building 7. The Building 7 thing, the, wasn't Building 7 full of, like, some sort of, like, chemicals or gas? Wasn't it full of, files. like... No, it was... No, it was full of files and information that they didn't want to get out. I heard that it was sto they were storing there. all kinds of, like, chemicals and shit in there. No, and it, no, and if you notice, there was a camera on that building for hours. Now, I was in TV and video. It takes time to set up a camera with cables, and that camera was set on Building 7 and recording for hours. What about the plane that. that hit the Pentagon? The Pentagon's, what, four stories tall, and it's a 30-acre mile-wide footprint? Why wouldn't they crash into the roof? Wouldn't it be easier to, like, land, like crash the plane to the roof, cause more destruction, than it would just to be to, like, fly the plane 50 first, feet above the ground and hit the... All, first of all, it was a cruise missile. There was no plane. There was no tail there was no fuselage there was no wings there was no uh, baggage of, of of people there was no dead bodies 250 there were no of, to your to your uh, to your point there were no images of any plane remnants or anything like the, nothing there was no there was no, no video at shanksville pennsylvania either right in there you can see the planes flying into the towers but there's no footage or photos of a plane flying into the pentagon right Okay, let, let, let's let's scratch this. Let's let's go to something and, else. Well, okay. and there was a, there were cameras at the nearby Marriott that the FBI uh, confiscated. They didn't want anybody to see them. We need those. We need those. Listen, I I have a, something completely different. Um, <laughs> I got a completely different one. What about what's, up, Matt Cox? what's going on, bro? I got to get you on here. Listen, what about this? What about Oklahoma City, the Oklahoma oh, yeah. City bombing? The what, Alfred FBI? P. Murrow building, yeah. What's your there take on that? There were bombs in the building that never went off. That was put in there by the CIA before, uh, what's his name, did the, uh, the, the get truck bomb. you got to get him on here. Okay, oh. one more. I have another one. What was, what? what is the thing? You guys have got to see 9-11, The Road to Tyranny by Alex Jones. I'm watching right now. I'm watching right now. 9/11, the new Pearl Harbor. Okay. Have yeah. You, have you seen that? But you got to see 9/11, the road. To, write this down. 9/11, the road to tyranny. The road to tyranny. I'll ask him about Bohemian Grove. By Alex Jones. Okay. I don't know if it's still on YouTube or if they what, took it down. What, what is it? Beho ask him about Bohemian Grove. What do you know about Bohemian Grove? That's it's out in San Francisco, 150 miles out, down in the, on the woods. They, What's they going on there? They worship this big owl called Moloch, <clears throat> which is in the Bible in Leviticus. This guy's and Alex basically, Jones. Basically, you, oh, you, you were sacrificing your children into the fire to have good luck in, in you know, farming and things like that. Is there any homosexuals and there? They have what's called a cremation of care which is this really sick fucking ritual that they supposedly have an effigy of a child or a human that they, they burn in, in the fire. Supposedly it's an effigy. And it's a place where they have all kinds of weird sexual things and all that. You should get a book by Catherine, uh, Kathy O'Brien called The Transformation of America. And in there she was a sex slave for the uh, for those people for the for the elite <clears throat> and a guy named Mark Phillips who was a CIA agent got her out yeah. of it. 
Bro, but he, she had been a sex slave for years, and she wrote a book called The Transformation of America. He, he can do this with any fucking thing. Watch, watch. watch. What Listen. about the moon? What about the moon? About okay, the moon. what what about the moon? What about the moon landing? What do you think about that? And well, he, he'll have. Books I don't think the moon landing happened in the first ones, but the other ones did happen. And guess what? Guess what? <laughs> what happened when it rang like a bell? Recently, you're gonna flip on this one. When they took off the the module. Uh, the, the, the was discharged from the actual uh, takeoff and it hit the moon and the moon, the moon rang, like, rang a like a bell for hours. That means it's hollow. And they now, uh, a lot of people think that the moon was actually towed into place centuries ago. So, and it's, that, it's, that, it's, it, that it's actually <laughs> hollow. So I, I have a question real quick. Um, you know the, the, the uh, Navy... Um, the Navy jets that got all those that got those UFO things on uh, on yeah, tape, the Tic Tacs. Yeah, what thing. do you think those are? What, what's what's the, the the UFOs? Of course, are they extraterrestrial are they or are, extra- are they are they Russian cruise missiles? No, no, they're extraterrestrial, dude. They're twenty five thousand miles an hour. Yeah, they're extraterrestrials. Wow. And they and they stop and they go. They they come down to the water, then they shoot up to the to the sky eighty thousand feet or whatever. How do you know it's not China or Russia? Speed. Nobody has the technology for that. So I, I okay. One I got another one. Fact. What what about this? And li, no, li, listen, bro. Like he'll he'll have books and he, listen. You should have seen him in prison. He 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 had tons of books, like all kind of pictures, books. And this is in prison. I can only imagine what he's got now. But wait, one more thing. One more thing. Listen, this is another. So what is the thing that what's the number that you always look for the uh, the what they're borrowing money against our social security number and you can get if you get your what was the name of the the f- number you were trying to get that you got your Oh, you mean the Cusick number? Cusick number. And what what yeah. is what's the what is that number good for? Why why do you need that? <clears throat> All right. Well, every number that you get from the federal government is attached to a CUSIP number, which is an international trading system that they have set up through Fidelity and the SEC. You just look up CUSIPnumber.com. You, you can read about it or go to Wikipedia. You can read about it. But CUSIP number, everything you get from the federal government, like your Social Security number, your driver's license number, passport, and Matt, even the federal ID number that we had in prison, all those numbers have a CUSIP, a major CUSIP number attached to it. Okay. And if it has a QSIP number attached to it, it has what's called a pooling and servicing agreement. And what they do is they add a bid bond, performance bond, and payment bond to it. They they actually securitize them and sell them as asset backed securities on the stock market, which are you know later connected to REITs and and mutual funds and things like that. So you, you understand? But, at one point, hey, hey, at one point, you got in trouble in the state. And didn't you file something against the judge, or you tried to get your your the your? Oh no, I filed something against the judge to make her the trustee, and she didn't like that. <laughs> she put me in jail. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's oh, cr- fuck. And you're uh, are you? Did you ever get uh, become a sovereign citizen? Did you that ever go through? Yeah, yeah. What is you a know, sovereign citizen? Yeah, what does anyway, that mean? these guys Basically. are asking. All right, basically, all right, there's the United States of America and the United States. If you look up United States Code Title 28, Section 3002, Subsection 15A, you will see that the United States in capital letters as a federal corporation that was actually incorporated just after the Civil War. The United, okay. it's, it's, what's, it's what we have now, which is a, a, a fascist corporate military democracy. Okay. What we had was the United States of America incorporated in 1787, which it was a de jure republic. And that's where you want to get back to. That's where you want to be sovereign. You're above the actual uh, 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 government because you have, and they pronounce it this way, they say unalienable rights, correct? You've always heard that. Well, it's not unalienable rights. If you look at the what the word unalienable in the dictionary, there's no meaning to it because the word is not unalienable. It's 
pronounce unalienable rights. Key word being lien, where the government cannot lien, levy, or seize against you. Yet we have now a fascist corporate military democracy. And a democracy is the worst form of government before you have total tyranny, which is what you've seen on the news and what's happening now. They want Does he think we should have an autocracy? Government. So what, real quick, sorry, Danny wants to know if you think we should have an autocracy? Autocracy. Autocracy. Like, should we be like China? Should we be like China? Fuck no. No? Then what else, what other options no. we have? You, you need a capitalistic system based on, 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 so on yeah. trade and, and that all that. And, and what they have is pure communism mixed with capitalism right now. But you don't have freedoms. You don't have the freedoms we have here, even <laughs> though we're losing those freedoms slowly. Well, hey, listen, Danny wants to – we got to wrap it up. But who's I'm going to talk to – Dan, who's Danny? Danny's the guy who's running this. The podcast is called Concrete, but oh, oh yeah, we got it on, on YouTube. Yeah, but I'm gonna I'm gonna contact you. I'm gonna give you Danny's information. See if we can try and get you on here. Are you able to travel or? No, I can't. I got an ankle monitor. You know that. Where's he at? He's in. Um, where are you at anyway? Right now I'm in Margate. Where's that? And I work six days a week. What's that near? <laughs> Margate is uh, near Pompano Beach. Pompano Beach. It's well, Fort Lauderdale. Can they, Fort Lauderdale. To, can they come to Tampa for a day um, with a probation officer? Yeah, if you get okay from the probation officer. Well, hey, let me let me call you back. Let me call you back. I'm on bye. All right, bye. <laughs> yeah, I, bro, know, it, I know a lot of people he, who know all the shit that he knows. There's right. a lot of people like that around here. Bro, he's something else, man. He and he and then his got a great he's, memory. He's red pilled. He red he got red pilled like in the Matrix. <laughs> yeah, he. <laughs> he's great though. We would go into his cell. You could sit there for hours and just you get anything you could what come you, up what with. What did he go to prison for? I mean, he was running. It was it, he was he was charging people like he would literally get your your taxes. He would do that thing where all the money you had paid in and interest and everything else, and he would they'd come up with some calculation. They'd apply to the government to get the money back, and the government would cut checks for like one point five million. They borrowed something like thirty oh, million dollars, wow. and guys were getting the checks. And they were cashing them. They were going through, and wow. then he'd give the, they'd get 10% of it. So when they got caught, you know, they're saying, well, no, no, it's perfectly legal. You understand? Your honor this, your honor that. Mm. Look, and then this code and that code. Yeah. They went to trial. He and all these guys went to trial. They lost. <laughs> guys are getting 25 years. He got like 15, 16 years. Wow. He was making phone calls. He was what's, just making phone calls. What's the dude's calls. name? Chris Marrero. It's Chris, awesome. He's wild. Chris Marrero. We yeah. got to get him on here, bro. Listen, we and he gets, high as fuck he gets get super animated, too. Like, mm. he gets all like, no, look what happened? He gets excited. He's like, no, I'm telling you. It's exciting shit. Hilarious, oh, yeah. bro. And he's, he's super smart. Like, you're like, but, you know, he he believes, like, every con everything out there, he has, a, there's a conspiracy What is it. the, what do you think about people? Do you believe that, any of this shit he says? No. None of it. No. You don't believe any of it. Um, why, why? Why don't you believe? Just, you're not interested you know, just, in it. You don't think not one of them could no, be true? No, I'm some sense saying there's some semblance in some conspiracies. I'm not saying there's not, but I mean not every like not everyone has. You know, sometimes people just they 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 sometimes they they blow up a building. The guy's yeah. pissed off. He puts he gets some fertilizer and some diesel, mixes it up, and he blows up a building. He's an asshole. There's just assholes out there. Yeah, like, but I mean uh, everything like like these kids shooting what do up you schools. Think about, uh, he'll have a whole conspiracy behind it. What do you think about the Unabomber? I've seen those two, like the Sandy Hook. Yeah. And shit. Oh, yeah. The, what happened was they were being Crisis given actors. LSD oh, yeah, by the CIA, ridiculous. and they were in. And you'll be like, what? Well, the CIA LSD thing is real. It's actually no, been proven. I know, but not for. Like Sandy Hooker, right? right like right, I mean, he'll right. he'll have he'll there will be a conspiracy. Give the CIA my he phone just number. Doesn't take anything. He doesn't take do you anything. Know anything. Do you know anything about value. about Columbine? About those kids? Did you read anything about that? Um, I mean, did I read anything? about Do you know anything about like? I don't do, know. do you remember when that happened? Like, yes, but I don't know anything that it was wasn't Marilyn on Manson's CNN. fault. Yeah, they listened, or, they listened. Those kids were actually listening to Marilyn Manson, and that's the reason they did that. I mean, Marilyn, they were, they it's were, Marilyn Manson's fault. Oh come on. They were deeply disturbed kids, and they could have been listening to Cindy Lauper and probably done the same fucking thing. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like you're just disturbed, and you're going to come up with a reason to do something really sick because you're 
being picked on. Didn't those kids write some sort of like uh, manifesto before they did that? They wrote. I, don't know. Some I think like, they had written like journals, and and they I think they've written about it since then. Yeah, because uh, I know Jordan Peterson has so, talked about reading their like. Those, right. those kids lived. No, they died. They killed themselves. Oh no! Which one? The which, which ones are the ones that live? Like now, they're all like got life sentences or something. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, he because he. Oh no, no. Or wait, he read. I think he read their journals or something. He yeah, read that, that's that's uh, Columbine. Yeah. Okay, then he had read the journals and stuff, and he was like, you know, here's they were upset about this and this, and they wanted to go out in a way. But here's the land. thing: Do you like he talks about it? But like, do you think they believed that they were? doing the right thing or do you think they believed they were doing the wrong thing i have no idea i haven't read anything i don't know yeah. enough to all i know is that they killed they shot a bunch of their of their um i feel like they think students. they were just saying fuck it <laughs> yeah, i mean but you, you i don't think they thought they were doing a righteous act but i mean think about it yeah how many times in high school were you you know or middle school you know were you if you're being picked on everybody. or yeah, you get frustrated and you lash yeah, out. I never and, thought about killing everybody. No, I never thought about going and getting an AR-15 and just Not mowing extent, anybody, but everybody probably, down. Like, maybe but, I hate everybody or something. Right, you know what but I you mean? get frustrated and angry and pissed yeah. off and, you know. Some people snap. Yeah, but these guys they were, were like snapping. they su- they were like super premeditated with it. Like they, yeah. they, they, oh, yeah. they thought about it and wrote about it for months. Yeah, they but they they they... You know, and they got himself tr- into like, a. They they apparently from their whatever they wrote about it, they truly believed that they were doing the world a service by getting rid of all these people. Uh, yeah, well, they were they were assholes. You know, yeah. Some people are just assholes. Some people are just assholes. That's true. You know, especially if there's three or four of them together, and they've got access to weapons. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're awkward teenagers with pimples that aren't don't have girlfriends. And yeah, they're like, you know how old they were Manson. like they were super young too, right? They were still like teenagers. They weren't even in their twenties yet, were right? They? they start thinking in their twenties. What do you mean? They were in their teens. They, they, were, they were all yeah. like teens, weren't they? Like 14, 15 years old. That happened. High school, that right? happened. When I was like ten years old when that oh, happened. Yeah, I mean, I think they ended up. You know, then. They got upset, and then they went in. They just started executing people. Yeah, they're just little scumbags. I mean, they had that documentary <sighs> Bowling for Columbine that that one guy made. What was it? Well, he did uh, Fahrenheit nine nine eleven. Yeah, Fahrenheit nine mm-hmm. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that guy's name? What, yeah, he was huge. He did um, Michael Moore. Michael, Michael Moore. Moore. Yeah, yeah. that's him. Yeah, he interviewed Marilyn Manson in the documentary. Did he? Yeah. What did he say? Because they all blamed him. The news blamed him for it. They like banned a bunch of his shows, or whatever. And they were like, uh, "Don't you promote this kind of stuff, this imagery, and this kind of thought process in your in your music and everything?" He's like, "What would you uh, What would you say to those kids if they were here right now?" And Marilyn Manson said, "I wouldn't say a word to them. I would listen to what they had to say, and that's what no one did." <laughs> nice, boom, <laughs> mic drop. <sighs> well, all right. What What are we doing, Matt Cox? What's, what's going, going on? on? What's up with your love life? Let's talk about it. Since we always do. Yeah. So nobody's going to listen this far. You're back this in love. A, yeah. What is it? 30, 40%? Back in love. What is love? Listen, I was Matt's, always, Matt's I was always ride, in love. Matt's, Matt's riding the roller coaster usually, right Usually now. Matt comes in a little crying, a little Matt's sad. Matt's riding a little, a little, a little hurt. A little hurt. A little hurt last time. Now he's feeling good. I am feeling. I'm feeling really good. He's coming in. He's got a new swag. He's, he's feeling got a new coffee. outfit. He's a new outfit. Uh huh. Matt's feeling cocky. This uh. is this is Matt. Every time he comes in the podcast. <laughs> what a classic song. It just reminds me of the Beavis and so Butthead movie. Matt's feeling good right now. He's riding the roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the roller coaster of love, Matt. You're on the up right now. That that, that right there. Uh, you're, you're, copyright stri- you, you got He's on the part climb. where it goes. Climbing up. You're at tick 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 tick. You're climbing the roller coaster right now. You're on Space Mountain, Matt we'll Cox. See. We'll see. You're about, you're about to run through she's, the loop. Listen, and she's on her best behavior. Nothing in life best is steady, behavior. Matt Cox. If like you the were, last four or five weeks. If you were on an even line so right good. now, you'd be dead. Just like the heart monitor. No, you don't Beep. want that. I don't want that. It's all about it's ups and downs. Yeah, it's yeah, all about ups yeah. and downs. The so my ups and downs are 
<laughs> way worse than most people. Like, you know, it's like 26 years in prison. It's like, you know, dead broke, you know, tons of money, you know, totally in love. Your girl's long, long gone. Right in a movie. Right they right in a steal movie. it. They steal it from you. Vice they, doesn't give you your damn credit. Oh, but mean, then you just, find out they have the credit in there. <laughs> then they're cutting you a check. Then they're back. And it's like up. And that's just, Matt, yeah, it's bad. Matt, you You're riding some, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all right. It's all right. Well, that's good to see. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope uh, life is good. We don't have any more crying. Uh, me coming back here. There will uh, be. It just didn't work out. It's inevitable. There will, there will be inevitable. crying. <laughs> Tears of uh, joy. Uh, <laughs> when you putting a ring on it, man? Uh, are you yeah, going to propose? I, I said six months. I said, let, I said let's just... Six, Matt is like the hopeless see, romantic. Six, mm -hmm. So we can go. Can we go six months? We'll do a ring. Six more months. You'll do the wedding. We'll we'll do a wedding. Nice. But just let's you know. See, it's not you, that I don't believe you. You and it's Jess, not that I'm not in love. Not that I don't think that you're all in. Mm -hmm. Let's just. Matt's got it all. Let's make sure. Out. Matt's let's got just it make all sure. Out, okay. Bro. Yeah. Listen. Listen. I love the Mike Tyson thing. <laughs> Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Mm -hmm. That's right. Like my listen. My plans. I'm getting punched all the time. <laughs> that plan ain't never gone my way. So, yeah. mm. we'll see. We'll work are you guys? Gonna, are you never gonna have any more kids? No, are you, I'm a hundred years old, bro. <laughs> I can't even pick up a, a child. How, what's your sperm? Count I don't think like? I could outlive a, a dog's like life his hairline. What's your fucking sperm a one? Like? My, I mean, I don't know what the sperm count's looking like, but I got them pills. Everything's good. Yeah, that's different from the sperm Everything's count. Everything's all right. But the, I don't. I don't need the sperm count. Some women want babies. So, listen, we're good. I'm good. They got dogs. Yeah, I can get a dog. Yeah, I'm not really a cat person. Not that I don't like them. They're nice. I guess they're okay. I just not a cat. Bro, person. what is that thing that uh, toxoplasmosis? You ever heard of that? Mm -mm. Oh my god! How did bro. you just come up with toxoplasmosis? Look up what toxoplasmosis. Sounds interesting. So there's this shit that people get that are around cats a long time. People that own cats, they develop this fucking this thing in their brain called toxoplasmosis, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That comes from cats. And it's a it's like a Okay, here it is. Toxoplasmosis is a disease that results from infection with toxoplasma. Wow. Uh, a, a Gandhi parasite, one of the world's most common parasites. Infection usually occurs by eating undercooked contaminated meat, exposure infected uh, from infected cat feces. That's why pregnant. That's why pregnant women can't go around cat litter because because of toxoplasmosis. She, mm. she knows, um, uh, or mother to child transmission during pregnancy. So it's the shit that you can get from cats. So there's this thing. It's this fucking parasite. It's like this super fucking smart parasite. It gets into rats. Right. Listen to this. It gets into rats, and the way that it gets transmitted to cats is it makes the rats fucking dicks get hard and get. It fucking gets super horny, gets a hard dick whenever it smells cat piss. So all these ca all these rats get super fucking What's horny happening? with hard ons whenever they smell cat piss, right? So these rats are attracted to the cat piss, which brings them near the cats. Then the cats see the rats, the fucking cats eat the rats. Now the rat is in the cat. That's how the fucking disease this sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. Bro, that's the how... The rat is in the cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how the disease gets fucking... Transfers itself to the cat. And now the cat has... You mean the parasite. The parasite, so, so now right. the cat has the, the parasite, parasite right. and the cat... Now the cat has the parasite. And the now parasite the, knows that the parasite, humans like to keep cats as pets. Yes. So it goes into the cat. Imagine if that was and for that's like... That's the next level Imagine parasite. if that was like humans and grizzly bears. I don't bears. know about all that, but... Uh, so then the cat licks the mom and she gets a parasite well, that's what and he's passes saying. it on to... That's that smart. So people get... Find out what the... Find out... Find out like whatever. what the symptoms or like what the uh, the effects of toxoplasmosis is on humans. Yeah, like what does it matter? Like what is it... What like is We what have is parasites it, yeah. all through our body. What like, does it do so to what? humans? But this is crazy though because a lot of people like... A lot of cat owners get this. Swollen lymph nodes. Um, especially around the neck. Muscle aches and pains. Headaches, fevers. Generally feeling unwell. Inflammation of the lungs. I have all that. That's it? <clears throat> Cure that with a joint. How do you know if you have toxoplasmosis? <laughs> uh, doctor can do a blood test to see if you have those antibodies. Um, 
Anyways. Your cat definitely has that. Do you have a cat? Your cat's out there I, roaming I around eating, eating all sorts of stuff. I got a cat. I got a you cat a, a kid. For the first time. You what? I got a cat for the first time a year ago. But my cat's an outdoor cat. Okay, my cat at night we let him out. He fucking roams the streets. He goes from he he neighborhood hops all night long. He shows up at the doorstep at seven a.m. He comes in, he eats, and then he goes back out. That's how I want to live, live in life. life. Yeah, <laughs> show up to somebody's <laughs> house, eat. You don't have to pay for fucking roam the shit. neighborhood all night. <laughs> Come back in, eat, and eat, live in. Get and up he, and do and it. He's yeah. not fixed. He's humping the whole goddamn town. Talk, toxo he's, plasmosis he's everywhere. He's pumping all the cats around town, and all the rats are get are getting hard balls and dicks and eating his pee. I'm not a, the the hard balls. I don't know how that entered into this whole thing. <laughs> Next level <laughs> parasites. I don't. I mean, we got to get. I'll bet if we. I'll bet Chris has a whole thing. Like, Imagine if there was a version of that with humans and grizzly bears, where <laughs> humans just got fucking horny and fucking. <laughs> Grizzly bear piss. <laughs> we, the grizzly bear just really fucking weird. ate us. <laughs> no. Ah. What is happening? I gotta drive across the bridge, bro. We gotta wrap this up. Sell some paintings, man. I mean, listen. I sell paintings. How paintings, much is the painting? They, they're not even. Exp- they're in, they're inexpensive. They're How much? Two ninety five, and I ship it to you. That's a, that's a deal. Show deal. us the gray, the gray purple biggie. We like that one. <clears throat> the gray purple biggie. This one's pretty cool. Hold <clears throat> on. Oh my god. This one? Mm-hmm. No, oh, the other gray and purple biggie. Such a jerk off. <laughs> that's a good that's a good one. That one's fire. How long is this process of making one of these? That's a that's a fine arch degree right there. Look, you even put the X on the edge of the painting. Mm-hmm. It wraps the sides. I got more I got, I got a few more. I got like three more of these. Not I mean, they're di- they're all different. They're all different colors because when I paint them. I put the yeah, bro. I do all. I want to picture a Trump with two stealth bombers flying above his head as he's sitting on the fucking on the ninth hole of Mar-a-Lago. I'm telling you, you did you watch that video? No, yet? I couldn't find it. I was looking through the fucking DMs. I couldn't find it. Unreal. Pretty cool. I want I want like a fucking fisheye angle of Trump holding his putter on the green on the ninth hole of Mar-a-Lago. They, to, they should put that with, scene in a movie. Two with, stealth bombers over his head and like a little a little like caption quote that's power baby i'll do yeah. that i'll do that except it should be with trump him. and I john should, bailey i could do that with him holding yeah holding the putter and the planes going behind yes. him up and 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 do the uh uh that's power baby yeah did you say baby did no, you say i don't power? i don't know that's I power it. that's power I'll try to find it and send it to that's you perfect that's good you gotta find it bro Pull i could do that here. i could do that like three <laughs> foot by maybe three foot by Three foot by two foot. Two, Matt, have around. you seen that we 40? created an Instagram group chat between the three of us? Have you seen it? No. Because yeah, we post shit in there all the time, and you've never said anything. Because he didn't. He just told me tonight you when I got a notification. Here, I but it's been I it's been notify- going for like six months. We've been sending you shit for like months now. We send shit all the time in a group chat. You gotta you gotta get well, in there and respond. But I've never to us. seen well, you dude, respond. That's because I didn't even know. Because you know what? So I have two Instagrams. One's the pop art one, which I run. No, we send it to the regular one. Mm-mm. Then you have the inside, inside, your crime. inside your crime. Right, that one. I, I don't respond to because I've got a guy who takes care of that. That. Well, how do we me. respond to you? How do we get to the one that you'd look at? I mean the the Cox Pop Art. That's right, my that's my it. Instagram. We Cox gotta add, Pop to that. Art. We gotta add that account in there. Yeah. Because then I it's would get called them. concrete with but spelled C O N. What's your what's your thing called? Cox C O X C O X. Pop. pop art. Cox pop. Unreal. Art. I found it. Follow back. All right, I'm I'm on it. All right, how do I add them to the uh? Go to the group chat. All right, group chat. Group chat. Group chat. Group chat. I Concrete. thought you were just ghosting. All right, can I add? How do I add them into this? Go up to. We don't have to follow. Click I don't the th- yeah that. Click add. You even follow click you back. I think somebody. I don't. I don't. I take all followers if you just Try follow him. me. Uh, is it the Lucas kid? Cox. Cox pop art. Add. All right, you're added. But he's probably not going to see anything we already sent. No, That's we have it. To send new Got shit. it. Oh, no, no. I can see it. I'm going <laughs> to remove Inside True Crime because fuck that one. I got. Oh, I. Oh, look can at you what. you see all the are, old are stuff? Are you serious? Yeah. Look, what, what's what? What are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Bro, I didn't see that. This one. is how we communicate all day, every day. So you have to respond to but us. You on this. don't. I didn't know any of this was happening. Now oh, you do. There's Danny with his little boy. Where? 
That's your picture. Oh, my profile picture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, what do you think about all this Joe Rogan controversy going on? They're trying to ban him. Joe Rogan uh, began right before the Spotify earnings report causing problems for the CEO on the call and contributing in part to the drop in its stock price. Spotify officials say in the earnings call that they did not expect their subscriber numbers to be affected by the uproar over accusations that Joe Rogan has spread misinformation about COVID and the vaccines. <clears throat> misinformation. Misinformation. I bet you Chris doesn't think it's misinformation. No, Chris. Chris no, Chris. 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 Oh, we should have had him Chris. going on the COVID. The problem with COVID is that everything's. How could you say it's misinformation? They changed the fucking. We don't know what's going on. Everything changes every single month. He's not pro vaccine. Yeah. Are you vaxxed? Me? Yeah. Oh man, let me tell you. Where's? She's huh? in the bathroom. She, okay. Yeah. So I so I had to go to Amsterdam, right? And what happened was just before I went to Amsterdam, like. You either had to, you had to like have a va have the vaccine, or you had to take a test within like twenty four hours, mm -hmm. right, of getting on the plane. So I went in and I got the vaccine, you know. Mm -hmm. But you had to have the vaccine ten days prior to going, and I got it on like day five, and I didn't know that till I got it, and then it was like fuck. So now I got it. So then I I went home when I went back when I I saw her. She, and I told her I got I got the vaccine. Fucking, like, which one did you get, Johnson? Lost. Johnson? Johnson and Johnson. She's oh like, no! She's like, that's the worst. Oh my gosh! You're like, the you the fucked know, one. You the don't know what that is. You don't know what's wrong. That's with the you. worst I'm, one. I'm like, I'm fine. It's gonna be fine. And she's like, Are you? You have now? 15 years from now, you, when you end up, you know, you're infertile now. You're, you're sterile. Now you're that. Stop. You're sterile. I'm a hundred years old. I'm probably infertile anyway. So, you know, she went nuts. And I, then I ended up having to get tested anyway within 24 hours of me getting on the plane anyway. So you got it for no reason. For no reason at all. Mm. What's the whole Vax controversy about, Matt mm, Cox? Mm, mm. Me? I what's it boiled down to? What is it? What is it? What's the whole stink about? What, what, I mean, it's just that basically. The whole vaccination controversy. What's it all about? They're trying to make you get something. They're trying to make you get the vaccine, and even though getting the vaccine do doesn't something. stop you from getting the, from getting the virus. It makes it a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. And then they're saying that the, because so, so many because enough people don't get it, the people that did get it are still getting the virus, even though they're supposed to be protected. Like it's a whole to me. It's just none of it makes sense. But whatever. What's the point of it? Why, why, are the, why is the government pushing it so hard? I don't know. I'm sure that Chris will tell you they're putting tracking what devices do you in think? it. So what do I think? Matt I was going to ask you that. <laughs> you have an opinion. You've never even thought about it. I mean, I've thought about it, but it— just it, don't care. I, I just don't—I just don't—it's just— it, the You're day, not interested. I just don't think I'm going to come up with the answer, and it's not worth worrying about something that I can't— Control. Control and don't have the answer to, and in the end, I don't know that it's— I don't, I, I just, even if I knew the answer right now, what would it change? I could, what, go do a podcast and yeah, talk about it, and right. then they'd, YouTube would shut me down immediately <laughs> because I talked about it. I could go on, what could I do? Yeah, but there's some people, done. there's some people on here who are listening to you that respect what you say and think you have a valid opinion and think that you're a, a thinking person. What, uh, I think is, I think people value your opinion. What are your thoughts? Like, if you actually had a, 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 took time to think about it, what you would come up with? There's people that actually value your opinion and what you think about. I mean, well, they're 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 sorely mistaken because I don't really have that much of an opinion, and I don't think my opinion means that much anyway. And I don't really, and it doesn't matter. There's so much bad information out there. Don't you think the government has our best out? interest in mind? Like they really do care about our health, and they want us to be healthy, and like they're they're not corrupt, and they actually you they're know just batting a thousand. They they do care about us. They don't lie. I don't believe any of that. Why? I mean, I think that I'm sure there are decent people in the government, but I also think that there are people that are put, put in positions and they take advantage of power, they, their power and their situation. I'm, you know, and Pfizer and those companies, those, the vaccine, those are good companies, you know, with high moral standards. <laughs> He's trying not to get banned. I mean, Right, I mean, he's I mean, getting brownie points on YouTube I mean, right I, now. I, I, I think, and and the only reason that YouTube censors the people that talk shit about him is because you know we, they YouTube cares about the health of the Americans. And Danny just got another plaque. Oh uh, yeah, it's in the it's mail. in the mail right now. I mean, I'm being serious. I mean, they just I'm not a CIA it. shill, but. <laughs> Poor Bruce. Well, Lamonte. if you don't believe they have your best interest, 
Then you have to believe I, in some conspiracy I, theories, right? I mean, I believe in They're some. They're good. The government is full, and the CIA is full of good, honest people. No, you can't trust them. You know, when, once sometime, one time what my grandpa Come said on. is he, he said, if I wanted to watch somebody lie, I'd turn on the news. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the answer. Do do you have the answers? No, I'm just curious. I'm asking you questions because I, you're I, my guest. I don't I don't have the answers. Listen, man, I just, you know, I'm I'm like everybody else. I just want to watch some 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 sitcoms and eat some TV dinners and <laughs> TV dinners? <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I do. I what eat. Kind have you watched those arcs? What do we eat? Fuck those arcs. Lean, lean cuisine? Yeah. You eat the lean cuisine? I love lean cuisine. They're cheap. They're like three fifty. Wait, what do we get? Oh, Two man. for just I like they served three. us in uh, oh, in the fuck. state feds. Three for Chipotle closes in twenty minutes. I'm fucked. Three. We, we what, order what Uber Eats. Three. We get buy three get one ten. free or yeah yeah it's like three. They're like three dollars and change and you get them and I uh, I love them, I love them. I've been eating them for like two years now. Really? Yeah. I How is it compared to prison food? I mean, it's 10 times better than prison food. Although I made one for Juan the other day and he was like, and I go, are you guys living together now? No. And I was like, I was like, I was like, that's pretty good. Right. Pretty good. Right. And he looked at it and he, he, he goes, yeah, no, it's good. It's good. I go, see, I told you, he goes, what are you talking about, bro? He goes, it's, this sucks. He goes, you're eating these twice a day. And I went, yeah. He goes, it's horrible. This is horrible. And got all upset, but I think they're actually good. I like them. I never and they're low them. calorie. You no, know, I'm concerned about my, concerned about my calorie. Wait till you guys weight, get to right? be low calorie. Should you be more worried about like sugar and carbs than you should be worried oh, about calories? Bro, I eat a ton of sugar. What about carbs? Yeah, he's going to Starbucks. Um, I, I think I'm moderate in carbs. I try and eat a, as much protein as possible, but you know, and I and we work out. We work out at like, I mean, I've been getting better. I was waking her up at like four o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, and but there was a lot of a lot of for what. To go work out at, be at the gym at Three five. Three or four? Yeah. Well, I don't sleep, but maybe four or five hours a night. And so she gets upset really? because apparently she's insisting that you need like six or eight hours a night or something. Mm -hmm. So I need at least seven. That's nuts. I could never sleep seven. I, now, can't, I can't function without seven to eight hours. This morning I woke I up at, at 3.30. I woke up at 3.30. I went to, we went to bed at like 11, 10.30, 11. 10, like 10.30, 11. I slept till 3. I woke up at 3.30 in the morning. Laid there for about 10 minutes, went back to sleep, woke up at 4.30, laid there for a little bit, woke up at 5.30, and finally rolled out of bed because I was like, I just, just can't. That's like how my wife sleeps. Yeah, I, I can't sleep more than straight, maybe four hours straight. Same thing with my wife. Yeah. You and my wife are like the same. You and my wife are like very similar in a lot of ways. <laughs> That's odd. <laughs> that was an odd thing to say. Uh, yeah. let's, let's end it on that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even seeing that. <laughs> I, let, thank God you didn't reach over. <laughs> <laughs> because I sleep, I sleep fucking. I don't wake up. I fall asleep at eleven o'clock at night, and I sleep uninterrupted. I fucking snooze eleven to seven thirty or eight. Oh no, I don't wake up once. She wakes up every two hours. No, nah. I wake. I listen. I I wake yeah, her up with coffee. I go get her coffee. I'm like, hey, here's some you know, coffee. Come on, let's go. We got to go to the gym. And she, she's like, are you fucking serious about this? I'm like, come on, let's go. Let's go. We're doing legs. We're doing legs. We're doing, come on, come on, come on, come on. And she's like. Um, are you really? I'm like, come on! I let you sleep in. She just let me sleep in. It's five thirty in the morning. I'm like, right? I've been did up you, since did you three. Work out, did you work out this morning? Yeah. What What is your workout routine? You do like a lot of cardio, or do you just do weight, weight, a lot of weightlifting? We're really just doing cardio because I'm I'm doing. I mean, we're really just doing weightlifting at this point because I oh, I no do cardio. cardio like pretty much every day at this point because we just, just huh? What kind of cardio? I mean, besides sex, I mean <laughs> that burns a lot of calories. That burns a lot of calories. I mean, cardio. That's my only cardio, but listen, trust me. You want to see my abs? I mean, it's working, bro. You need more than three minutes of cardio a day, man. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> That's not what's happening. <clears throat> um, <sighs> so, <laughs> Lucky you. So anyway, um, yeah, so uh, we just work it out. Congratulations. We're, we're working out. Yeah? Yeah. Good. I'm sure at some point it'll die down, and I'll have to start doing, I'll start to start doing the elliptical again. <laughs> yeah. But, you ever do yeah. hot yoga? No, I don't even know what that is. What's hot yoga? It's yoga that's hot. Yoga, it's basically yoga in a sauna. You know what yoga is? I mean, I know what yoga is. Okay. Yeah, and they just turn the heat up. It's like yoga in a I sauna. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do yoga. I definitely don't want to do it without the air conditioning. I don't want to do oh, anything without no air conditioning. Air. They turn the I heat on. I hate being outside. Do you, like, you, you, you ever use a sauna? I mean, I've been in a sauna like 
a long time ago. I, I never really liked the sauna. Why? It's just very sweaty. Yes, and naked. that is true. <laughs> it's just very, it's, it's just doesn't feel, it's just weird. It's good for you. I don't, I don't, I, I don't think so. I disagree. <laughs> You disagree? I disagree. <laughs> and I don't have anything to back that up. He's, I just feel He's not disgusting. tall enough for that ride. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that just, was fucked up, bro. That's that's very very take mean. it back. Take it back. Very mean. Mean take that spirited. Back. Take You're that both back. mean. Both of that you. was him, not me. Take that back. <laughs> like, that's the first time that's been said. So, yeah, I don't have anything to back it up, but I, I, I just feel like they're just disgusting saunas in general. They're probably pretty un... Hygienic. They're more yeah. sanitary than most things, I would think. Mm. I'm not <laughs> sure about things. that. It's like, what other things? <laughs> Bro, the sauna is so hot, it probably like burns up all of the bacteria and parasites and shit. Yeah. They say that the sauna kills COVID. They say COVID can't survive in that kind of heat. Then why? 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 Aren't, <laughs> then why aren't all the hospitals filled with saunas? Like, you got COVID? Put them in the sauna, Jim. You know, no. I disagree. Yeah, do people in, in really warm climates not get COVID? All right. Then how come you really don't step into a climates, sauna? Bro, the sauna is <laughs> why aren't we all just, just really having saunas? Like, why didn't they just issue everybody saunas? Then? No, that's too why easy. am I wearing a mask? How, you can't make money off a sauna. Bacteria can live in hotter and cooler temperatures than humans, but they do n- do best in a warm, moist, sounds like a sauna, rich environment. Yeah, that sounds like exactly I don't feel like good. a sauna. Google does a sauna. Can COVID survive it in a says, sauna? It says it grows between forty and a buck forty. Bullshit. Can COVID survive in a sauna? Google that. 140. Is, are saunas 140? No. no. Hell oh, no. I was going to say. I, okay, so if they No, can they're live, close. I think, I think the saunas are typically like 110. 10, something. 110 maybe. But bacteria lives in what, up to 140? So it grows up to grows Well, what, what is, is it a bacteria? COVID is not a bacteria. What is it? COVID is a... No, COVID is a virus. A virus. Yeah, so that's different. So what, what, what kind of... Uh, What's the max temperature for viruses? Yeah. Can <laughs> sauna cure... COVID. If Google That's what I would search. Bringing, in, bringing the sauna temperature to at least 160 Buck degrees 60. throughout the space, including floor area, should be effective to disinfect any virus. Yeah, including humans. Who's going to live in 160? Yeah, a buck a buck 60? Can I survive in 160 100, degree temperature? How, how hot do saunas get? You might as well can you step in. That's an oven. So that's how you slow that, roast some yeah, ribs yeah, at a is, buck that sixty. Is, that is like a Traeger. <laughs> you can slow cook some ribs on a Traeger at one fifty. I guess it'd probably take you a could, good six eight hours. Maybe you're all right for ten minutes. Yeah, you just cook yourself, bro. I don't want to go in a sauna. Okay, I don't we go s- in the sauna. Do you? Yeah. Uh, I was in a couple times a week. Really? I spend probably a total of two and a half hours a week in a sauna. No, that's a lie. Two and a half hours a week, five times, 30 minutes a time, every time. You ain't popping 30 minutes a day every nah, day. No, nah, probably two, maybe two hours. Oh yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I don't wanna, I'm don't. i I'm not really a sauna person, but you go in there. You, Plus, I do the hot yoga. <clears throat> you do hot yoga? Yeah. Why? Because it's really good for you. It feels fucking great. I feel good. Mm-hmm. I don't do hot yoga, and I, I don't go to the saunas. I feel great. In pretty yeah, good shape. To each their own. Yeah. It's all mental. It's all it's all placebo. What what are the diet? What's the diet thing you're doing? Are you still doing the this this? Um, no, I'm on regular diet. Keto Rama. No, I try. Yeah, he was, I, I every tried, time I talk I tried to every, I'll try all kinds of crazy diets. I try. I'm, I fuck around with all the, all the different types of diets and and. What was the one where you were starving yourself for like twelve hours a day or something? No, I, I, did, I did. I did. Oh, I fast. I, every year I I fast. I I don't eat for like seven days. Okay. One I do like a seven day stint with no food. Is that good? He'll probably usually make it about four to seven. I make it five at least. The 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 I've copped out one time. I copped out at four days. It's like I mean, I one said. time I copped out at five days, and then one time I copped out at six days. So I've actually never done the full seven. <laughs> I fast. I, I fast pretty much every day until I get hungry. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't. Yeah. yeah. So. Hmm. Where you know, what gym a guy, do you work out at? Uh, LA Fitness. There's LA. like and, LA and, Fitness is still a thing. Mm-hmm. Really? There's LA Fitness. It's in um, so one right Wesley the Chapel. Street. Wesley there? Chapel. Um, there's a guy who fasted for 300 and like 80 days. How's that possible? What's that Find guy that look guy. like? Uh, What's that can, guy? Like? He's all bones. liquids. Yeah, you you still you can eat you can eat like beef broth, like bone broth, and yeah. you can drink water. Drink. You don't eat broth. But that dude, t- yeah, he's got to be all fucked up inside. 
That's like uh, actually not really. He he is like probably one of the healthiest people on the planet. That's how you can cure anything. <clears throat> yeah. That's why they say a lot of animals when they get sick they don't eat for a couple of days. All right. Man Angus Barberi. Uh, somebody named that does some weird shit like this. Fasted for no, three hundred eighty two days. Jim Jones doesn't do some stuff like this. Look at that. Look at he that. Lived on look at tea, that guy. Coffee, soda oh, water, and vitamins. Bro, the amount of fucking discipline it requires to not eat for five days is un fucking god can we see a picture of this guy is that the fact the fat guy the diet that that's him i mean Before find, a, find and a better after. picture of this oh guy. okay yeah what do he look like after he was nothing right but there in the right bone and ears it says they lost 265 pounds click the picture austin you're really fucking shit in the bed today on google yeah, bro can we see a picture austin you had a picture austin's usually on it he had too much manischewitz tonight <laughs> 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 oh, That's Look before and after. Whoa. This is Whoa. this was a long time ago, huh? Whoa. You know who Kelly Slater is? He doesn't is? look good, bro. He doesn't look good. You know who, do you know who Kelly Slater is? No. He lost a lot of weight. Kelly Slater does seven day fasts. Slater. It's good for you. You know what it does? So you, you know your digestive system, your your stomach and your intestines over a lifetime, over 20, 30, 40 years. You build up this shit inside of your gut and like uh, that lines your intestines called it's called a mucoid plaque. And basically what it is from like decades of eating shit or eating food, whatever it is, you develop shit. this shit or food. You Either develop or. a lining of just like plaque shit that comes from your food that lines your intestines, which it inhibits um, the your digestive tract's ability to absorb nutrients and shit. Right. Can you like, just take fiber? Just like just like plumbing. Metamucil. No. Get rid of it? No. Can't, no, no. It, so what, does what, fiber happen, do? what happens when okay. Sorry. what happens when you fast for that long um, is that shit starts to strip off the insides of your gut and your intestines. And that shit starts to come out of you. So that's what that's what like prolonged fasting does, like three, four, five, six days does to you, ten days. And like it's basically like what do you use to clean out your plumbing shit? Drano, you know how like your plumbing in your house gets li- like gets mm-hmm. like coated with grime, and you use Drano. This is like like fasting does the same thing. Like it cleans out all the bullshit in your intestinal tract and your digestive tract, and uh, it enables you to absorb the nutrients from your food again. It's crazy. It's like a fucking. Yeah, it's what fiber does too. It cleans out no, your entire system no, too. Fiber doesn't clean you out. Fiber just makes you shit. I don't think it does it that well yeah no fiber to that extent right this is like this is like i'm gonna look into fiber i'm gonna, I'm gonna talk because i don't feel like not eating for th- seven days right of course you don't but that's well, you why just said you didn't eat for like a month <clears throat> you already you just did a fast oh yeah you told me you went into a depression fast for a month no i didn't never said i just wasn't eating very much i didn't say i didn't eat at all i just wasn't eating like i what look like when i'm super happy i tend to eat more so when i'm depressed i literally i feel sick to my stomach i you know, it was like heartbroken. So I was, you know, it was pathetic. Oh, stop. All right. So you I went know. from two lean cuisines a day to one every two days. And it was like one a day <laughs> and maybe a little bit of snacking and then just a lot more sleeping. So I got like five hours sleep instead of four, you know, and just depressed. It was just a problem. I don't depressed. think it's good for you to get four hours of sleep. But I can't sleep any longer than that. I mean, really, I'll just lay there. I'm like, there's plenty of people do that. Really? Yeah. You ever try Ambien? No, I don't think Ambien's good. Have you ever taken an Ambien and just fought it and tried to stay awake? No, I've never taken an Ambien. Oh. <laughs> you should try that one time. I recommend no. it. No. <laughs> and write a book. I mean, I have to I have to take it piss tests and stuff. I mean, I'm not. I can't be experimenting <laughs> with drugs. <laughs> well, Danny said it would be okay, Your Honor. Yeah, well, Danny can come visit you. <laughs> <laughs> because you're he said Stephen King did it, so yeah, I, mean. I mean, yeah, Stephen King did it. All right, well, how long have we gone? Well, I don't know. Where are we going? I forgot. It's ten o'clock. Let's end it. But t- let's wrap this up. We've been going since seven thirty. Or no, we started at no. eight. We started late eight o'clock. Yeah. Hey, Those so if you like the podcast, do me a favor. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and uh, share the video. Make sure you hit the uh, the bell so you get notified of other videos just like this. And uh, leave a comment in the comment section for the algorithm. And I appreciate it. And see ya. Sue.